No, I'm, I'm gonna say this. It's gonna come off a little crazy. I got guys from New Jersey and New York City. You think we scared of anything? You, you think we worried about God trying to muscle us and tough us out? We do that. You know, that's who we are. Yeah, that's right. That's what we do. That's what we do here at Chris Sims on Button Podcast. He's not from New Jersey, this other guy, but he's from Detroit. Yeah. They got some of that attitude up there. I've lived in New Jersey. That's right. You're right. So now you know a little. And now guess where I live right, right now? Right. Connecticut. Connecticut. It ain't New Jersey. Some same traits. That ain't New Jersey. Connecticut. Not it's 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 nice and it's it's a nice life over it's here in Connecticut. Peaceful. Connecticut. It's, it's real peaceful. Yeah. Okay. You get it over to Jersey, as I always say. You gotta have, you gotta be ready to answer one question really quickly all the time what? if you live in New Jersey. What the f- you looking at? Oh. And if you don't have the answer for that, you're gonna have to probably hear another. Retorted, re- retorted a question or something like that. <laughs> what is the answer to that? Uh, nothing. Um, okay. Or f- you, Ooh. whatever I want. Well, that doesn't look. You better be ready. Yeah, well, you better like be ready. Problem. Jersey's overly populated. Yeah. <laughs> with a lot of different cultures, it's got a hood. It's got the country. Uh-huh. It's got it all. It's a. It's hey, people don't understand sometimes. First off, Jersey high school basketball is as good as anywhere in the country. We're seeing that with St. Peter's. Shaheen Holloway, I watched him play high school basketball. So that's who we heard from there, the head that coach the, of St. Yeah. Peter's, who's yeah. beat everyone Kentucky in the NCAA tournament. Right. Unbelievable unbelievable upset win. But, yes, and, again, of course, those kids, yeah, from New York, New Jersey. Yeah. You know, th- th- those are, like, real things. Like, I, again, I don't, I'm not trying to pump my hometown. Hey, we're also dumb in our state. We like to use performance-enhancing drugs uh-huh. and – wear gold chains with frosted tips i mean and yeah. so we have our issues don't excess get me wrong tanning at right times, excess right. tanning yeah. right there, right there are issues definitely we have our issues but being tough and being as good as sports is not one of them yeah that's one thing it's such a densely populated state you know the basketball because there is so much inner city between new york and new jersey it is real where guys like shaheen holloway he grew up like there was no like field for him to go play football or baseball and he went down to the courts you played pickup basketball yeah and you played it rough there was no referee there it was like street rules and there is something to that when i was at texas right we had rick barnes who's the head coach of the university of tennessee yeah he would always ask me like i need you want to come out on the team you want to play basketball he goes i could use a spot up three-point shooter because he knew i could shoot a little bit and all that and he's like i could use some jersey toughness and he always go i i i gotta have a guy or two from jersey on every one of my teams and he did barnes said that texas yeah he gotta have a guy from up there in that New York, New Jersey area. Just to rough up his other guys? Exactly right. He knew there was, like, fouls aren't a thing. There's no such thing. The foul don't get called at, you know, 118th Street in Harlem and go, oh, he touched my finger. Like, nobody calls that. They love that wow. attitude. It's a real thing. He right. goes, the guys on my team have never had to think about what they're looking at. <laughs> they need some New Jersey. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there was a little lesson in the New Jersey for you there. I like uh, it. Came in cool. strong today. Yeah, yeah my, I, honestly, I didn't pick St. Peter's, but I'm doing pretty well this year. Are you I, doing I got good? Michigan going. You know, I'm a, a Michigan fan. Yeah, even though I didn't go there. I grew up a, around there. So big I, win for them. Big win for them. They're yeah. moving on again. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing okay here. Not I didn't even fill yet. out a bracket this year. I got like a little flustered on like Wednesday night with trying to watch my draft stuff, and then I also had I forgot I had a pack to go on this family vacation Oof, this last weekend yeah. to see the in-laws, and I never filled one out. So are I'm you sad disapp- about that? I am no? a little sad. I am. Yeah. I, it's to me always like a good family thing. It's one where like we have fun. We put it on the refrigerator. Mm-hmm. I make my daughter do it. My wife does yeah. it. You know, you're all tracking it together. You're all tracking it, keeping points. Someone would have picked St. Peter's. You right, know that right. exactly right. My daughter probably would be like, oh, I like their emblem better than Kentucky. Yeah, <laughs> really? You pick them? <laughs> yeah, it is. That's what she makes wins. it cool. Genius. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So uh, right. NCAA tournament going on, but today is a huge day Football on this day. podcast. We got to talk about some news that has happened. Some little old news with uh, a new quarterback in Cleveland. We'll huh. get to on this podcast. Um, but all it's a big day because it was about a year from now. You you shocked the world. Shocked the world. On this podcast because of your draft quarterback rankings. Right. You put Zach Wilson one ahead of Trevor Lawrence. Mm-hmm. Shocked the world. Right. And now today we're about to shock the world again. The oh, draft baby. rankings again in 2022 Yeah, for quarterbacks. We got it. We got our top five. We're going to go through it. We got some other guys, of course, on the outside looking in we'll talk about. We'll hit a little overview of the class altogether. You guys give a listen. We're going to talk about it again on Wednesday. Wednesday, we'd like it to be bring in questions about the quarterback rankings, things you'd like to know about other guys. I'll answer that. And uh, hopefully we can go from there. And then next week we'll move on to a new position. But, yeah, we got some good news to hit on. NFL is not being um, 
they're they're not starving us for things to talk about here. I, I will say that. I mean, holy shit yeah. balls, Batman. This Ever off-season. since the Super Bowl, it's just every other day I feel like is a, whoa, this is game changing, game changing. Well, I think it's kind of related too because yeah. the first thing we're going to talk about is Deshaun Watson to the Browns, that trade that has happened. I think we have the trade details uh, of it here, Kristen. What is it? Three first-round picks, a third-round pick, a fourth-round pick. Browns get Watson and a fifth-round pick in 2024. And I do think all that, you know, we've seen Russell Wilson move. We've seen the news on Aaron Rodgers staying put. A lot of talk on these elite quarterbacks. And I think it is it is partly because some of these questions cannot be answered in the draft yeah. this year, right? right? If there was Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson and maybe even a Mac Jones this year, you might see some teams at the top there being like, all right, we can we can figure this out or we can make a trade to get one of those guys. It doesn't seem to be an option this year. I, I, I'm glad you're bringing me. I was going to wait till we got to get in the draft stuff to talk yeah. about that. But – you know, one thing I think to keep in mind is you know, Washington at 11. They took the polarizing Carson Wentz, yeah. okay? Instead of going, wait, we're at 11. We're going to be able to get one of these quarterbacks for sure. Sure. Right? And to me, that says something. That does. And it tells you that, yes, it's not the, you know, greatest class we've ever seen. And that there obviously is some teams that have had, oh, I'm not sure about that. I'd rather go with a guy I've seen in the, on film in the NFL right. and go with that. And I think you're right. To, 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 that still holds true with the Deshaun Watson conversation there. And uh, it was an interesting development in how it all shook, shook out this weekend. All right. So, like I said, we'll yeah. get to those quarterback rankings. Maybe those teams are misevaluating. Maybe Chris has seen some things that uh, other NFL teams are missing with some of these draft prospects at the quarterback position so we'll get to that here in a little bit but let's start with Deshaun Watson getting that fully guaranteed deal 230 million dollars over five years that's 80 more million more than previously was the high for the guaranteed money on an NFL contract uh let, let you know this is so complicated it right? is because it's honestly right now, as we speak right now he's still facing 22 civil lawsuits yeah. accusing him uh, of many uh, encounters off the field massages um, sexual accusations. So I, I know there's a handful of Browns fans that don't know what to think of course. right now. Of course. They're like, okay, we, we want to win. We haven't won in a long time. You also want to win the right way. Yeah. It's like getting to a Super Bowl and the other team forfeiting. You don't want to win that way. You want to win the right way. And I, and I think there's a lot of fans out there, Browns fans specifically, kind of conflicted with this on, on what to think about Deshaun Watson coming to their team. Not only just coming to their team, but coming – on a massive deal. Yeah, massive deal. No question. I mean, game-changing. Game-changing deal. Game-changing move by the Browns. You know, as we've talked about before, when Deshaun Watson is healthy and playing and hitting on all cylinders, he's one of the five best quarterbacks in football. He is one of those guys that can carry a team through rough times, like we talk about. Game plan's not good. Injuries, whatever. But... I mean, yeah, we're going to be talking about this for a little while because, like you said, the 22 civil suits are still there. And we knew how much of a lightning rod subject this was to begin with anyways. And it's sensitive. And it's not easy even us sitting here talking about it. It's not because I don't want to seem insensitive to, to anybody out there. I don't. You know, but you know, the, the blatant reality is when you're a really awesome football player in the NFL – NFL teams find ways to make sure you can play NFL football. And as we talked about all along, you know, I said really for the past year, I knew there was a number of teams in the NFL that were kind of swiping this up to like, hey, this is just a young guy being dumb and stupid and liking girls too much. There, there's definitely that, there was that sentiment out there. You know, again, I'm not saying he's guilty or anything like that, but it is 22. It's a hard time for me to sit here and go, oh, I think 22 people are lying, right? You know, again, the truth you some usually lies somewhere in between. Mm-hmm. Um, but Cleveland, I think, felt like they felt comfortable with the person. And again, I don't know what they did or what avenues they exhausted to kind of do the information or the research there. I think one thing they also showed us that they were exhausted of Baker Mayfield to a degree, too. And then I think one of the most shocking things to me about this whole thing is the fact that when they kind of said they were going to Sean Watson and then Mortensen reported right what did he say Uh, they wanted a quarterback who's an adult and I had kind of said something similar the day before because somebody close to me the situation you know I said a PFT a similar thing to Florio you know along those lines it was kind of the same thing said to me too to where okay so that happens I thought for sure if Cleveland didn't get Watson they had a plan b to get rid of Mayfield I mean because you just don't go that far in on Watson you 
like Baker Mayfield, I think by all accounts, by you and me even viewing him, you would think he'd be a guy that would get a little hurt or pissed off about a situation, True. right? You would think that, right? Or he'd be like, if if I'm not the guy, then uh, let's move on. Right. right. So I was shocked. That you don't they, believe in me. I don't believe in you. Let's move on. They didn't have a plan B. They did, Their plan B was, oh, shit, Baker's really offended. Okay, we need to go all in more on Deshaun Watson. One, I'll say this. I thought Cleveland was always – one of the things that bothered me about last week was I went, man, Deshaun Watson's just picking teams on based on where he wants to live. That's, 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 you know, that's nice. You can live a nice life. But I don't know if that's going to mean you're going to set yourself up for success. Yeah. And I was definitely one with Florio last week and everything going, man, Cleveland is the team. I mean, Cleveland, there's, there's no questions about the team other than let's get a number one receiver in there. Other than that, you go. Eh, everything else is pretty freaking good, you know. So the, that to where that to me is where you know I thought it made sense. And hey, good job by the Texans. I thought Nick Casario was maybe going to lose trade value with this thing going on and on and on, you know. But he didn't. He maximized what they could fully get here. Had four teams that really, really wanted him, and four and teams that really wanted him were willing to look or deal with some of the blowback they were going to have to deal with. And Cleveland's going to have to deal with that. I mean, yeah, you're sorry. That's part of this deal here. Uh, we'll see where it goes. And, you know, at some point, you know, like I, I said to Florio today, you know, I'd like to see Deshaun Watson and Cleveland make some comments, talk in front of the mic. They have to. You know, at, at some, some point. point it's got to happen. I think that will go a long way to soothing people over. You know, they did release, the Browns did, yeah. some statements. Uh, Jimmy and D. Haslam, the GM, Andrew Barry, Kevin Stefanski, and they all cited extensive research into Deshaun Watson. But you're right, you got to get up and you got to face the music in front of the camera. And maybe that won't come for Deshaun until all of his legal issues are settled or he's he's been um you know yeah until that's all over for Deshaun Watson yeah. and I, I do think there needs to be a point where uh, he's got to own up to any any mistakes that he's made in the past and at that point you know people are very forgiving right like we do forgive and we move on definitely but we haven't had that moment for Deshaun yet where he's stood up and, and taken ownership and responsibility for anything any potential wrongdoing he's done up to this point no I mean it, it's it, it's going to be interesting to see what he does with these 22 civil cases because again he's trying to maintain his innocence and act like you know I, I didn't do anything wrong I'm being wrongly accused okay that's fine you know I, I get that but that also can draw this process out even longer right and then Okay, we draw it out even longer, and then who knows, you know, what the NFL stance was going to be. You know, Florio brought up the point today that I thought was interesting, where maybe if he doesn't even settle these civil lawsuits, the NFL might be like, you're not allowed in the league until you've settled them. But then if he settled them, it kind of shows guilt to a degree, right? People Good. associated with, it. even though it doesn't mean you're guilty, people just go, well, he's guilty. He wanted to get rid yeah. of these situations. So that's a tough look, you know. But I will say, in settling the cases. I think at least it just gets the subject matter out of the way a little bit to where now it's like, okay, that's done with. We're still going to talk about the subject, but you know, now we get to evaluate Deshaun Watson and how he handles it and how much was he humbled by it and remorsefulness and all of those things. I think that'll go a long way to the Cleveland fan base you know, to, to sue them over. But you know, again, it's a weird subject. It is. And it is weird in the fact that this is where the optics don't look good. The fact that it's the greatest contract in the history of the NFL, and we're giving it to a guy where you go, 22 he's, pending. He's got an issue. Civil. Right. And we're, that's the guy that gets the greatest contract in the NFL. That's where I understand fans going, like, what? What kind of message does that send? Yeah. You know, and that, that I understand. And that's I, an issue what? for sure. And you wonder at a certain point, like, if the NFL could have stepped up. Like, I, I think you would almost expect that. Like, you know, the NFL being like, we don't want that optics. I right? know. I, I know. I know that, you know. Maybe they will make say something to his representation. Basically, like, listen, you're you're not getting back in the NFL until the civil suits are 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 done, and then we'll figure out your suspension. Yeah, right. Uh, but th this is, I, I to me, it just again with that still out there, the civil suits, it just gives more media attention always. It's just oh 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 wait. Oh, we didn't talk about it for a week? Oh, today he's meeting with somebody from the civil lawsuits. Oh, well, let's bring it up again. Let's talk about it again. Totally. You know, so that, that's where it, it's going to be tough. On the field, though, it's unbelievable. I will say that. He fits their offense. Of course, Deshaun Watson fits any offense. Of course, he's a, 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 you know, a, a level up as far as quarterback play from Baker Mayfield. I mean, yes, that for sure. Um, you know, Deshaun Watson is one of those rare guys that – 
again, he can beat you with playmaking, but he can beat you in the pocket being surgical too. And that's rare. That really is. He's got that Mahomes, Allen, wait, I can get out of the pocket and make magic happen. But if you keep me in the pocket, fine. I'll throw lasers all over the field and make the right decisions too. Mm -hmm. And that's that's why he is a special football player. He's going to help out Cleveland for sure. And a, just the AFC. Just the max exodus of the NFC players going to the AFC. And I know he's not one of them. But it's just amazing across the league. I mean, the AFC North, the fact that Burrow, Lamar, and Watson are in one division. And then we got another division in the same conference that's got Mahomes, Herbert, Russell Wilson, and Derek Carr's a low man on the totem pole. Yeah. I mean, it's it's unbelievable when you really say it out loud. All right, so what does this mean for Baker Mayfield? Then? Yeah. Because uh, now he is there on a team that doesn't want him. He doesn't mm -hmm. want to be there anymore. Mm -hmm. um, Pete's got an interesting question here. It's like, okay, obviously probably Baker Mayfield is uh, available at a price. Yeah. He's 27 years old, coming off a bad year, but an injury plagued year. Yes, you don't right. know how much of it was injury, how much of it, because we've seen flashes of, of good of play. Good Baker. We've seen You've enough to him. go. There's, there's, we've seen good Baker yeah. more than once in his career to go, wait, the guy can do this for a stretch of games here. So that's in him, obviously. Yes, to your point. So you got Baker Mayfield, who's available. Yeah. You've got Jimmy Garoppolo, who's available, 31 right. years old. You got Matt Ryan, who maybe now is available at 37 years old. If you're a team out there and you're looking at those quarterbacks, which one are you picking? Well, I'm taking Matt Ryan. If you're just talking about a guy right now for one the next year. year or two, yeah, I'm taking Matt Ryan. That's the, that, there's no question about that. Still really awesome, great decision maker, accurate as hell, better at moving around and making plays with his movement than people want to give him credit for, stands in the pocket, tough as f***. I mean, does it all. So if you just gave me from that standpoint, I'm going to take Matt Ryan. I am. Now, after that, I'm going Baker Mayfield over Jimmy Garoppolo, though. I will tell you that. Or even if you asked me for the long haul, oh, I would get into, ooh, well, maybe it would be Baker Mayfield. If we're looking to get a guy for the next five to six years and do something, you know, then, then Baker Mayfield's stock goes up a little bit as compared to that Matt Ryan conversation we were just talking about. Matt Ryan's on the tail end of his career. We know that. You know, He's certainly got some good years left in, in him, but it's, it's on the downslope. Um you know, again, you know, I'm, I'm underwhelmed by Jimmy Garoppolo. You know that. Yep. Jimmy Garoppolo is a good player. He does nothing that wows me. He was a part of an unbelievable offense. And that's one of the things I've raised the question about with Indy all the time is, you know, because at first everyone was going, oh, Jimmy Garoppolo's in the guy. I go, wait, we're going to get rid of the guy who throws dumb interceptions and we call him doing Carson Wentz things for a guy that, literally does Jimmy G things where we know that means dumb stuff too and really probably has done more dumb stuff over the last years than Carson Wentz but was on the 49ers and they won some of those games so we just went ah oh, it doesn't matter yeah. that stupid interception he threw in the Packers game in the divisional playoff before the half when he was running backwards and tried to throw the ball 45 yards down the field as he was running backwards we just forgot about it because we went oh they won by a touchdown so what 10 points, so what? And so that that's where that that's a, a dicey situation with Jimmy G. So what do you think? Like off the top of your head Colts right now? Colts are the definite number one thing, I would think, who? with Baker for, Mayfield. For I mean, Baker, yeah. yeah, yeah I but would, they might want to go Matt Ryan if they're they thinking might, like you. They might. I'm going to say that Matt Ryan's going to stay in Atlanta, though. Okay. I, I don't think – I think Matt Ryan is mature enough to realize what the situation was. Is he pissed off sitting here on a Monday after all this Deshaun Watson talk? Yes, I do know – for a fact, and I, I told Florio this last week, Atlanta did not actively pursue Watson. Watson told Atlanta he wanted to go there. And then they went, oh, shit. Okay, wait, you want to come here? And they tried then just finagle and figure out how they can make it all work mm -hmm. and make their pitch to him. I think like Matt Ryan can get, get his brain around that. I don't think his ego is too big. I don't think he's going to make him so mad. He's like, oh, you guys tried to get rid of me. The hell with it. Hey, you're 37. And then they're trying to get the guy's 26. They're going, who they think could be a quarterback for the next 12, 15 years. So that's, if, if you got to be in reality a little bit. Plus, I think with Matt Ryan last year, remember in the draft, early in the draft process, there was a lot of talk about Atlanta taking a quarterback at it four, was, yeah, right? Remember yeah, that? Yeah. You know, Arthur Blank said he was going to give the football, you know, the red carpet to make the decision they wanted. The football guys are going to make. So he knows. And I would think, too, uh, I mean, Family man, got young kids. Does he really want to uproot everything? And I, I feel like he'll want to stay in Atlanta unless he just feels like, hey, they are looking to move on or anything. So, no, Matt Ryan's going to stay in Atlanta. Baker, Indy. Baker, Indy. Jimmy Garoppolo on the bench in San Francisco. <laughs> 
I, I still want to know if like Gar- Garoppolo did the shoulder surgery just to stick it to the 49ers so he had more control over the situation because really it gives him more power. It does. You know, it kind of is like, oh, I'm not healthy yet. or I'm, it, it kind of makes it a little tougher on the 49ers. Yeah. Jimmy G, I'm going to say Carolina Panthers as of right now. If you made me choose one of them, I think he's going to end up there. But Baker makes sense to Indy. This is where it's a little scary, though, if you're Indy. It's, it'd be the second quarterback in a row where you go, oh, we made a trade for it, and everybody's going to go, if it doesn't work, everybody's going to go, well, what do you think was going to happen? We just saw this with Baker. It's just like yeah. it happened with Carson Wentz. It's and then they, of, go, they go, what else do you want us to do? We're trying over right. here. Now, I don't think they'll have to trade big assets away to get Baker Mayfield. Probably I mean, not. one thing we know is Cleveland's got to trade Baker Mayfield. Yeah, He's going to have to sign off on it to a degree. Aren't that many available not opportunities? Not many very op- right opportunities, right. He's on the last year of a contract with the fifth year option. So you got to pay him $18 million. That hurts it. Let alone, you're going to have to give him a new contract if you want him. So that hurts the value. I would think you could get Baker Mayfield for really a mid round pick. Hmm. I don't think it's going to be much more than that with the obvious fact that he's not going to be in Cleveland. And I think he still can be good. I do, I think, I'm not giving up on Baker. I can chalk last you. year up to an injury, injury riddled year where he right. played hurt. Right. Which is, you know, hey, more power to him. I'm with you. Look I'm bad, not giving up but... on Baker Mayfield either. I just he's not Deshaun Watson. I think we both know that, right? But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I hear you there. Any quarterback needs some receivers, and one of the best out there in football, although Chris doesn't believe so, Devonte Adams. I don't know why I had to throw that. In there. <laughs> You're such, you respect a, him. You sure. respect. Him. I do respect him. Uh, and now he Major. is he is left Aaron Rodgers, and now Aaron's got no number one receiver. You go well. Imagine what Aaron Rodgers could do if he had another guy outside of Devonte Adams. <laughs> now, now he go, has any guy. Now we go. Now what's he going to do? Um, so Devonte Adams over to the Raiders, first yeah. round pick, second round pick. So I guess the Packers at this point saw it was, and he's not going to stay. We better get something for him, Trey, and they did. Um, but this instantly transforms kind of the, the Raiders' offense, which wasn't bad. No. And Derek Carr didn't have a bad year despite no. this. Hunter Refro, we made him into kind of one of the upper echelon reception, uh, like a possession receivers yeah, in the NFL. Slot receivers, jitterbug type guys in what the do, middle. What do you make of Devontae to the Raiders now? Well, I mean, there's, there's a lot to make here. First off, you know, good for him. I'm mad I didn't see this a little bit coming. Oh, I'm mad. You could have called it. I'm just mad I didn't like. You know, for one, like, he lives in Las Vegas, oh. which I wasn't aware of until some people told me okay, this. Okay, so week. you can't be mad about that. So I'm that. not mad at that. Okay. All right. But, you know, between that, I did know that him and Derek Carr, there were real conversations at the end of the year in January about them reuniting. Fresno State. Right. And then the last piece of the puzzle that I just learned a little bit, but I wish I would have thought about this because I think, you know, common sense could have brought you uh-huh. here, was that – you know, you're a receiver. You're Devonte Adams. You're in the prime of your career. You sign a five, six-year contract with the, the the Green Bay Packers, and Aaron Rodgers retires next year or the year after. You know, and there you are, stuck in Green Bay with I don't know who my quarterback is. Mm-hmm. You know, to me that was the other thing that I was told over the weekend that was a real factor in him going to Las Vegas. I can tell you who it is: Jordan Love. <laughs> Live there, yeah. Live in Vegas, like Derek Carr. Wait, I know who my quarterback's going to be there in Vegas for a long time. Instead of like, oh, I might be screwed over in some crappy offense here, you know, two years down the road because Aaron Rodgers now again did just decide to retire finally. Yeah. So I get that. I get that. Now the the the, the really the juicy stuff is. Did Aaron Rodgers, like us, take for granted the fact that if he signed back that Devontae Adams would agree? I would just want to know, and I don't know this yet, how much did he have an inkling? When did he find out that Devontae Adams might be leaving town? Because he must have been like, oh, shit. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Well, wouldn't you want to secure that? Like, wouldn't if you're Aaron Rodgers, right, and you're like, all right, I'm just going to do this, and I'm going to make sure this happens, because you see the numbers there if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, the leading wide receivers last season for the <laughs> the Packers, 123 receptions. It's amazing, The really. next closest was yeah. Alan Lazard at right. 40. Right, right. So it's um, amazing. That's where I don't but, think people. That's where people slight Rodgers, in my opinion. But if you're if you're Aaron Rodgers, don't you make sure before you're like, hey, just I want to call my top weapon and just make sure like he's up, he's a free agent. Like, wouldn't you just say, but hey, like, I no doubt it's, like, it's and maybe he did and didn't care. I don't like, know. Maybe he did and did, maybe I, he I don't did. know. Maybe did. I had a hard. I would have a hard time believing that though. That he would be like. Devontae would be like, well, I'm not sure I'm going to come back. And he's like, well, I don't care. I'm going to sign with Green Bandit. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I don't even know what to say there. It, it does make me question, like, was there communication? You know, how close of a friends are you guys? I right. mean, what? There's no way. 
Okay, and I know I'm not Aaron Rodgers, and I never had any connection even on the same level as him and Devontae Adams, but I'd have a hard time with, all right, one of the receivers I was closest with, if I was with Joey Galloway. I mean, Joey, if I was a free agent and he was a free agent and we were in the same situation, I would have been like, all right, so Joey, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to sign the contract. You're, you know, they're going to be able to pay you. They told me, blah, 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 you're, you're going to come back, right? I mean, I'm not doing it unless I got, like, the okay, right, okay to do it. So that is weird to me, definitely. So what do they do? I mean, with the Packers, that they have to make a move for a receiver, right? Well, where do they? Can they? I, I mean, no. Yeah, they can. I mean, it's just they're down to the. They got to get MVS back. I would that be the first thing I would say. He's out there as a free agent. Oof. Yeah, but I'm sure he's probably got a little bit better market than than they were expecting because again, he has a, one elite skill set of the fact that he can fly. Yeah, he can be a real take the top off the defense type of guy. Um, but dude, it's a game-changing move. It changes the Packers. Of course it does. They're not going to find a replacement for this. They're not. They're knocked down a level as a football team without Devontae Adams. They are. I don't. Who else is going to come in there and replace that? Randall Cobb? Sorry. Negative Ghost Rider. I mean, there's nobody on their roster that can do that. So that's what's weird. And then you talk about the Raiders. All right, here's one other thing I don't like, too. just want to clarify this, mm -hmm. too. I don't like the fact, again, Aaron Rodgers did some questionable stuff this year. I understand. I understand people not liking him and crap. As much as I like him as a football player, I'm even sick of talking about him. I get it. You know, I am. Immunized shit. That was some bullshit. I get it. But but what I don't like is like when I turn the TV on Friday morning and everybody runs with the headline of, well, Aaron Rodgers took all the money, so that's why they couldn't give it to Devontae Adams. Aaron Rodgers took all the money. Devontae Adams was like, wait, what about me? What about me? Oh, they offered him more money, Green Bay. So it wasn't about the money. So now come back or something on like a tweet that goes, you know, I apologize. I was wrong. It wasn't Aaron Rodgers' contract. Aaron Rodgers' contract is more team friendly now than it was before he redid the contract. Yeah, year one definitely. People they are just they're in. just jumping on shit, and that's what I hate about the business. They're just they're jumping on a narrative. I saw a number. No, no, the number's lower than it was before. You're wrong. You're just you're just jumping on a guy that you want to jump on. And that's mm -hmm. where I don't I'm not down with that with people I like or dislike. You got to be fair. And that's that bothered me over the weekend hearing that a few times. Yeah, yeah it was a, it was a narrative that a lot of people enjoyed. Right. right. They, right. Like, oh, and then Adam's Aaron Rogers, agent came out, which, which honestly, even if that was the narrative of like, oh, he took all. Well, you should. Like uh, football players, like you take the, I mean, you take what you can get. You take what you can get. Part, it's right. like it's not his fault. There's a salary cap. Yeah, you know, if it was I, up to Aaron Rodgers, be like, I don't want a salary cap. I know. You know, it's I like know. I'd like players to make as much money as they could without any artificial. I cap love on, the move for the Raiders, though. Ahmed. So yeah, because you got the best friends here. Do we have that picture of uh, of Derek Carr <laughs> and that? I think we got maybe a couple tweets there, Pete. Oh, there we go. We got best friends. <laughs> Is it really happening? <laughs> that that was from Fresno State football of a shot of. Adams and Derek Carr back in the day and welcome home, uh, telling jokes to each other. Like, ah, look at that. That picture right there. Like, hey, you're coming over, aren't you, after this year? He's like, yeah, I am. No one knows. Not even Aaron. Really? He doesn't know? You didn't tell him? Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a boost. It's a boost for the Raiders. We know they needed a different receiver, right? You know, you lose Henry Ruggs. That's, he's not coming back. They needed that guy. Enough to win the division. Mm, I'm not ready to say that. No. Enough to be second in the division. Mm, I'm no. not ready to say that yet either. I think the enough Raiders, to be last in the division. <laughs> yes, they have enough of that. A the respect, Raiders he have, says a respectable <laughs> fourth. They have, yeah. the, to me, the biggest transition out of all the teams in the West because of, like, <clears throat> McDaniels is – they got pieces with the Raiders, and I know teams are going to look at it. People are going to go there in the playoffs, but they're going to play a little bit of a different style of football, and that's where – they're, 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 they might take a step back this year in some ways just because it, it's a totally different philosophy hmm. that they're bringing in there as compared to the last regime. Well, that wouldn't be good, though. So, that would not be. Yeah, I wouldn't expect a big step back, but yeah. I'm just saying, like, it might. they might have to take a step back to go two steps forward, one of those, where you go, yeah. they're still good, they're in the playoff conversation, but they didn't quite get the defense the way they need it yet. That makes sense for Patrick Graham and his New England style and for Josh McDaniels. But the where I do love it is this. McDaniels knows how to feed people the football. Mm -hmm. And Adams can do everything. So there's no limitations to that playbook and to where they're going to put Adams. Adams can do all the Julian Edelman, Wes Welker stuff, and yet he can do all the outside receiver you know, hey, we just you got to beat this guy one on one stuff too. He's not going to necessarily go up and moss people all the time or just but good ball but skills, all though. of yeah. that, right? So that's where he's great. 
he's not only going to – the system, he's going to be able to take advantage of the system. The system will be take, be able to take advantage of all that he has to, mm-hmm. to offer too, and that's where it's going to be cool for McDaniels and the Raiders. Yeah, and the playoff structure we have now, all four teams in that division could they make could. the playoffs. Who the, who the knows? I know. Might right. be four of the top teams uh, yeah. in the AFC. All right, so that is catching us up on all the – happenings in the nfl we hit it all we got it all you tune think? in tune in to next week's edition of what happens is this offseason edition of the nfl has gone off the rails uh now it's time to get to the quarterback rankings oh yeah your bread and butter bread and butter you broke the internet yep. 365 days ago or around then when you ranked zach wilson over trevor lawrence and you know i know on wednesday you're going to get into it your look back with with Paul, yeah, but I just wanted to sing your praises just for a second. Okay, thank you. You saw red flags in Trevor Lawrence last year. Oh, well, I think we all saw that. You were higher than most on Mac Jones. Well, some may say he was the most impressive rookie quarterback, so that was a win for you. Thank you, Amit. You saw some uh, red flags and a longer way to go with Trey Lance, and maybe now the 49ers see that too. And you saw some passing game issues with Justin Fields while you ranked him lower, and I think we saw that. So well, you had a lot that. of wins. You thank had a lot you. of wins. Thank you. And he was better than Justin Fields. I, I will say that too, that I, I was wrong in some areas where – he did show the ability to be a little bit smoother of a throw or more consistent and a better decision maker. You know, again, it's hard. You're going to be wrong in this business doing this all the time. Um, so, but thank you. I appreciate that. Yep. And we also I, saw Zach Wilson in some highlight level stuff too, to where you go, damn, that was pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. I can see why maybe he had him number one. I still think Sims is an idiot, yeah. but okay. It's not as idiot as I thought with some of the plays we saw. So we'll see. We'll see where it goes. But um yeah, this is a different class than last year. Okay, so let's start with yeah. that. We got a, we got questions from the homies. They didn't know where you ranked these guys, but they had questions about these guys. And right. So we've sprinkled some of those in. Pete has hooked up our rundown with that. This is from uh, Jason B. 91 Is this class really as weak as advertised, in your opinion? Often analysis uh, spread the narrative, and the class ends up being good. Yeah. See the 2017 quarterback draft class. And right. He goes back to that class with Deshaun Watson, who was Mahomes, what, 12th overall. Yeah. Mahomes with 10th overall, right. so which is still high, but not like one, two, three. No, they like should have been higher, right? Last right. year, right? Um, so yeah, what do you think? Is this is this draft class as down as people are saying? Yeah, it is. It is. It okay. is. It's, it's not a special special class, and that's where I, you know I think even if you look at it like we talked about it a little earlier with like the Commanders at pick number eleven, going, you know what? I know Carson Wentz is a lightning rod quarterback, but damn, we'll take him because I think there's there's questions about this class, and mm-hmm. I understand that. You know, I, I think you know one maybe the high end talent isn't as talented as we've seen in years past. And there's certainly not the depth that we've seen in years past. I mean, for me and my money, you know, after the top five or six, it really falls off, Mm. like really falls off to where, you know, we've had plenty of other years where we can go down to eight or nine and go, Oh, I I like, you know, he's got a backup future. I I mean, this is, it's an underwhelming class. It is for sure. So you're talking maybe one through five, you're already might be saying backup future for some of these guys. I mean, yeah, you know, some, yeah, the one through five is not as strong as usual. The one, two, three is not as strong as usual. Mm -hmm. The one is not as strong as usual, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, uh, I think last year with, you know, somebody like Zach Wilson and Trevor Lawrence, I saw it all. Uh, the talent, right way to handle yourself, the toughness, can read the field, right? And now we just got to put it together in the NFL. You know, these guys, you know, no, there's some, there's some pieces missing with all of them that they go, oh, I wish he had this and then he'd be perfect. Or he's got to work on this to become a little bit better. And I think we got that, let alone, like I said, after you get out, really after you get out of the last few, the first few guys, you start to go, ooh, there's not a lot of like elite traits with any of these quarterbacks going down the list. All right, so we'll look at the good, the bad from your top five quarterbacks yeah. in this draft class, and we'll start with number five. Let's kick it off. Number five will be Desmond Ritter from Cincinnati. Yes, sir. Desmond Ritter, you know, first off, I'll say this. I really like the guy meeting him in Combine, right? You know, he's uh, got a great personality, acts like a quarterback. You could tell he's quick on his toes. I love all that stuff. But, you know, uh, like his body, all right. I'll say that. I think it's a guy that's going to continue to grow into his body too. Yeah, I mean, six he's, four, two fifteen is right, what I got here, right? And got a lot of room to get thicker. And again, you know, guys usually get bigger as they get older, and yeah. that to me is going to be a natural. He's one of the only guys in this class, Ahmed, that I would say right off the bat too is that his size size is a skill. He can throw over the line of scrimmage. He can throw over people when they're in his face and in the pocket. That's one thing I will say for sure that I like about his game and just the measurables just as far as that is concerned. But 
then after you get after that, there is some issues here. It, it's, it's below average throwing as far as at this point for an NFL starting quarterback. Right, there's some major tweaks that have to be done in his throwing that that are a little concerning to throwing me. Throwing motion, throwing motion, you know the quality of the football altogether, you know being able to step on the gas pedal and still be able to control the ball the right way, you know I think there's all of those issues. Let alone you don't get to see a ton of NFL type throws always within that offense. Now you know hey the running's real, right? It's a build up speed a little bit, okay, but the read option is going to be a real threat for Desmond Ritter in the NFL. He is one of those guys that, you know, read option, he keeps it around the edge. He can go for a 70-yard touchdown. The speed is worthy of that. But out of some of the guys we're going to talk about right here in this class in the top five, you know, in the pocket, got the worst feet in the pocket out of any of the, mm. the top guys. No doubt about it. I mean, and what I mean by that is forget the drops. I'm just talking about, you know, proper way to move your feet when moving in the pocket or delivering the throw. But has too much of the just stand there like a statue and then, wait, my feet are just in the ground, cemented, not moving. Oh, wait, now I'm going to throw it. You know, that, that's hard to do that all the time or not have any bend in your throw or in your legs and, and pop that way to really pop that back leg underneath you so you can really drive a football. You know, there's those issues. You know, the arm itself, like I said, is not that strong, let alone there is some mechanical issues. Hmm. It, lets, it lets his arm get a little floppy, right? You've heard me a little elongated at times. He's not a good short ball thrower. And, you know, again, short ball throwing is really important in the NFL. Uh, you know, I, you know I like guys that can throw lasers and do all that. But you got to be able to hit the five and the eight yard passes consistently to be able to open up the lasers 30 and 40 yards down the field. And that's a little bit of a worry with me, with the elongated motion and a lack of accuracy and precision in those throws. So I think that bothers me too. And, and you know, like I said, the mechanical issues lead to some of those things where you go, oh, it, this has got to get fixed, or he's just going to be doing it or trying to do it with God-given talent, and that's just too hard to do all the time. So you say one of his strengths is his size and right. being able to throw over guys, yeah. but in your conversation with him, he had some issues with that specifically against Alabama. Yeah. He goes, man, those 300-pound guys can jump there. Sure. But the problem is those 300-pound guys who can jump are going to also play in the NFL. Yes. And so maybe that's part of the motion and doesn't maybe throw as that's high. That's what as, it is. Or slow. And it's there. You there you go. It. You said it when you first brought it down. Yeah. It's the the elongatedness. It's the kind of you can kind of see it coming. It's a little – and I'm going to stand up now here. But oh, boy. Here we yep, go. Here we go. First stand up of the draft year. But, yeah, it's it's – you know, again, what really bothers me is the throwing to his open side. And, of course, he's righty, and that would be his open, and I'm lefty, and this side's my open. Keep but, your left. Keep yeah, your I'll lefty. just keep my lefty. We'll, we'll okay? mirror image. Because I know you're sick of hearing me say that anyways. <laughs> but, but, yes, so, again, you know, too many get the ball, and the feet just do this, right? They don't do anything. There's no, like, okay, let me get ready to throw and be yeah. on the balls of my feet a little bit so They're I can react to do it. Stuck to the ground. Just stuck to the ground. Like, oh, I caught it, and now I'm just going to – my feet and everything are just flat-footed in the ground, and I'm going to make a throw like that. I don't love that. Then, to your point with the Alabama game, you know, and all that, there is – you can, you can anticipate the delivery too much. He's standing there. The motion, the ball can drop and get far behind him at times, right? to where the arm angle can break. I don't necessarily like that. And the other thing that he really does, especially throwing balls to his open side, his right side, is, again, you know, if I'm going to throw a ball right here at the camera, you want to get a little of this. You want to see the back of my, you know, the name, the back of the numbers on the back of my jersey, on my nameplate a little bit. Some torque, some shoulder some rotation. Some torque, some yeah. opposites, right, like a golf swing, whatever. He too much is just, it's here, and the arm just goes by itself. And that doesn't help him spin it or throw nice spirals. It doesn't help his accuracy. It's hard to have a quick release like that because your body's not being involved, right? right. So your arm has to do it all by itself, right? Guys like Rodgers and Mahomes, when you say they can flick it, what you really mean is they can get their body into the throat where they don't have to use their arm that much, where they can go yeah. and just do this and be like, oh, man, he just he flicked it. But it's no, they know how to use their body to where we think of it as just a flick. Yeah, and right? we talk about this every year. Yeah. How much of this can be learned? It's a tough. It's a tough thing. I know. You know, that's where, you know, there's some upside to this player, but – you know, we don't talk about a whole lot of people through the history of the NFL that always fix these issues. And 
Part of that is getting with the right people in the offseason, being drafted by the right team that can that can fix you. And not all teams can do that. So that's why I got them number five. There's things I do like, certainly, like I talked about. So hold on real quick, because yeah. we're on this throwing yeah. motion. Yeah. Uh, JScan11 says, right. do you see any similarities in uh, Desmond Ritter's throwing motion and Carson Wentz's throwing motion from his college days, early NFL years? Uh, y- yes. You I do. mean, well, I, I know what he's trying to say here. It's the floppy arm a little bit. Wentz has a little bit of that, what I don't like, what we even talked about with Justin Fields last year. You know, again, is he, lets, he leads through his elbow. His elbow starts the motion which I want to go, really, there's really like no quarterbacks in the history of football that are great that we go, the elbow starts the motion, mm. right? And yes, there can be some of that flop. Now, it's not quite like that, but I think what our, what our uh, at JScan11 is trying to talk about is, yes, it's too army. The arm gets too loose at times, and that does compromise accuracy and power and all of that. Really, so many of his great throws or his best throws the people are wide open. That's the hard thing, too. You just don't see a lot of tight window, legit NFL-type throws that way. Throws a pretty good deep ball. I like that, yes. But, you know, his ability to pinpoint an 18-yard in cut, you know, as it being the second read and all that. I got major questions with that when it comes to, to Dozen Ritters. Yeah, and he yeah. wasn't able to show it against good competition, playing at Cincinnati for the most part. But you mentioned... There are good things with him. He's got leadership. He improved every year. And perhaps the throwing doesn't need to be quite as on point because he's a pretty good runner. Over 2,000 career rushing yards, 28 touchdowns in his four years uh, rushing the ball at Cincinnati. So are there enough good to offset some of that bad? Oh, boy. Well, Desmond Ritter's going to be like, I didn't even want to be ranked. If this is what Chris was going to do to the (laughs) Well, you know, he's a good athlete. He's got to get quicker feet in the pocket like we talked about. Right. Out of some of these guys, all these guys we're going to talk about here, they can pop around the pocket and make people miss better than he can. They can. Let alone the other thing that's he's not a great thrower on the run. Because of that long motion and he doesn't quite know how to incorporate the upper body, on the run it's more important than ever, and it becomes very hard for him that way. So there's some physical traits there to build on, but there's just not a lot of evidence yet to go, oh, okay, he definitely can do it. There's snippets here and there, I guess is what we're trying to say. Yep. You know, but base can get very narrow, which can lead to long strides, which also is into the, whoa, I can see it coming. I can knock the ball down because here comes this long stride, right? There's, there, there's those issues. And, uh, yeah, the quality of the football, the strength of the arm, Oh, I don't want to say it was disappointing, but it wasn't quite what I was expecting. I thought I was going to see a little bit more from Desmond Ritter. Maybe this is all because he made fun of the way you said Louisville. <laughs> he didn't like that when you talked to him. I'm getting him back you now. Go, you go, my dad. You go, my dad's from there. He's like, how can you not say it when your dad's from there? So this is your, this is your revenge. Though. Yeah, but, they're you know. just yeah. And then again, you know, this will be something you'll continue to hear me say with a, with a lot of these guys because this is life in the college college football. So yeah, there's very few on rhythm NFL type throws. Mm-hmm. A lot of the really good throws are kind of game plan, slant and go. We tricked him and he's wide open. Um, uh, he's a great straight line athlete. He is. But you know the four guys we're going to talk about, as good as an athlete he is and how much faster he is than the four guys before him, mm-hmm. his feet are not as quick and he's not as twitchy and quick as some of these, these other guys are in the pocket. So that bothers me. And then, like we said, the long, slow delivery and doesn't always spin the ball hard, does not always have great power on the ball. There's those mechanical flaws that he's got to fix to help that out. And that'll go a long way. And, uh, you know, NFL sure. is certainly going to help it out to a degree. It's just how much does it help it out? Well, he said this coming out of high school and in college. You're going you're gonna to pass on me. You're probably going to pay for it. He said that in your interview. So, hey, who knows? Maybe some I NFL so. teams are going to pass he's on a, him and he's, he's going to make him pay for it. For. Yeah, I hope he does. I hope he makes me pay for it. And number five, like I always said, this is nothing personal. I got to do these rankings, right? And these are just some of the things I see from him. I do. But there is some positives to build on. Um, I, but, but yeah, I guess all in all, yeah. uh, I, I guess I was expecting just a hair more. All right. All right. So you saw yeah. a hair more in your number four ranked quarterback in the draft class of 2022, and that is Sam Howell, North Carolina. Yeah, I'm going with Sam Howell. All right. So, I mean, first off, you know, Sam Howell, good in the pocket. You know, there's a toughness and grittiness to his game that shows on the film. He's willing to stand in there, take shots, definitely. 
you know, not like the fastest guy in the world, but he is mobile and he's got a great pair of legs and ass on him that allow him to break a lot of tackles, make people miss within the pocket, do all that. I like that aspect about him. You know, as far as like what we'll talk about here going forward, he's one of the few guys in this draft that I look at that can really go across the field right, and read defenses where you go, oh, wait, there's, there's plenty of plays of Sam Howell on here going one to two to three, good throw, all right? So there's that, you know. He does have the ability to throw the ball with some different platforms a little bit, and he does have a good hand. And what I mean by that sometimes is he can just make it happen. I wrote in my notes a few times, like, there's got to be talent because the position his body is in to make this throw mm. is pretty remarkable that he can even make this throw because he's got some mechanical issues too. He does. I mean, I don't like Sam Howell's motion. It's way too over the top. Way too. It's like it's the old school, like, 1974, you got to get the ball high, right? And I want to be like, no, Josh Allen and Rodgers and Mahomes are throwing the ball three quarters. They're, they don't, you don't have to get it high. You don't. That's so old school thought. So he's got that a little bit that does, you know, again, compromise accuracy and power on the ball. I mean, all you got to do is look at the combine. Go watch some of the throws on there. He, he throws some balls at people's feet because it's just like he's trying to be smooth and make it happen, and there's no mechanics to rely on. He's just trying to do it with talent, hmm. right? But, you know, between that stuff, you know, the ability to throw the nice deep ball, and you do see moments, like I talked about, going through reads, and also moments of, there's a handful of, I go, whoa, whoa that was a pretty f-ing good throw there. Wow, that was, he threw that in cut there. That was between two people. Or he, he looked front side and came back side and threw a backside slant into a tight window and ripped it and threw it nice. And so those are the things I liked about Sam Howell. You know, he's got experience. His arm is good. It's, he had the strongest arm at the combine as far as miles per hour. But it's also a little bit of a long, you know, long elongated over the top release that I don't think is you know great he throws it hard it's going to compromise some of his accuracy is what I'm trying to say there yeah he is one of the younger guys and I think of your top five he is the youngest 21 now he'll turn 22 in September and you mentioned the deep ball yeah Uh, PFF looked at him he's they said he's the most prolific downfield passer we have seen I think he just did it a lot you know he did they did they had some good talent that was their offense right they relied on his arm through the most screen they threw screens and go routes for the most part that's (laughs) where you're like, oh, here's the screen. Oh, wait, here's the go route. Here's the yeah. screen. Here's the go route. He dropped off. Now, people saying, you know, his stock dropped a little bit from last year. And then they go, yeah, he could have maybe been number one overall based on what he did two years ago. And I go, well, yeah, then his stock did drop significantly if you don't have him as the number one quarterback even anymore in a down draft class. So, but what do you make of that? What I mean, he looked significantly better. Two years ago, yeah, with more talent, you know, you had Michael Carter, you had Javante Williams, right. the two running backs, you had Deami Brown, yeah. a receiver right. you like too, yeah, right. Um, I mean, did he get worse? Was it just the talent around him? Like, what? What happened? I just think there? it was overhype at first. It was like, whoa, look at this freshman. He's got potential. He's making some plays. They're throwing deep balls down the field. They're starting to win games again, and his stats look pretty good. Like we always talk about, it just yeah. takes off from there, you know. But, but, yeah, it never got a whole lot better from there. Okay. You know, he's he's played a lot of football. Like I said, he sees the field well. Now, one of the negatives is he does hold the ball too much at times. He's a little too patient. He takes some sacks a little bit like maybe a Joe Burrow or whoever out there where you go, gosh, you know, not every you – know, like my old phrase, you not every play has to be the last play of the game here where you got to mm-hmm. hold on to it and, oh, I'm going to break this tackle and I'm still going to get that ball up. Oh, no, he got sacked for a 20-yard loss. Yeah. He you does know? break tackles, though. He as, does. As a runner. He had yeah. over 800 yards, and I think – he had like what sixty five broken tackles throughout the year, and so he's got kind of like that Ben Roethlisberger mentality in a frame that is more like Baker Mayfield. And actually, he looks a lot like he Baker. does. He's a little bit bigger. He plays like, like his Baker Mayfield too. The way he talked exactly. to you was like I was like this is like a he's Baker a Baker clone. Mayfield. It's gritty. It's it's who he reminds you of a little bit. He yeah. doesn't have the arm Baker Mayfield does. He doesn't, but. I do think his movement and athleticism will probably translate better to the NFL because he's a bigger human. Mm. And like you talked about, the power in his legs is real. When you you see it, you go, man, it's a lot of arm tackles. You know, splits a lot of defenders who think, oh wow, I'm just hitting a quarterback. I don't have to like really bring it, yeah. and they just bring the shoulder, and he stays up and keeps his balance. So all that stuff is really good. There is a lot of that, like the Baker Mayfield thing. But again, I, what I'll say is. 
You know, there's potential for him to be a better thrower again, like Ritter. If we can, somebody could teach him, let's not be so over the top. Let's incorporate the front shoulder. All right. Because you do see some, th- there's a few throws where you say, oh, wow, that, that had some heat on it. There's just not enough. And there's not consistently enough of it. That bothers me. And because of that, he will miss some throws too, because I'm going to stand up again just to get into a little bit of like, you know, the motion and the weird motion. And we mm-hmm. talked about like Desmond Ritter doesn't move that front shoulder a whole lot, right? right. And the arm can be floppy. Howell keeps his arm in a good position. The angle never breaks. He never gets his shoulder to the target. Never. And that's where I say sometimes I'm going, damn, it's it's amazing he even hits that target. I don't know. I don't know how the f- he even does it with some of the positions he's in. Like, and 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 to point it out, like again, if I'm throwing here to the camera, right? Mm-hmm. I mean he's he, he's like this to throw the ball to the camera. Totally open. He's going to be totally chest open, the camera. chest to the toy. He's going to get a little shoulder turn, but it's going to get nowhere near the actual target. And then he's going to give it the – it's going to come way over the top, right? It's like this almost every throw. And, again, that's hard to have a quick release that way. Hard to be accurate It's that hard way. to be accurate that way, right? It's a lot of moving parts. You know, you're getting a kind of a huh, herky-jerkiness – over the top throwing motion there. So those would be the things that worry me about him. But there are things to like, certainly, like I said. Uh, and I do think he's got a presence on the field and a leadership style that you could see is a little bit infectious. Even on film, you could see it. Yeah, I mean, he, he takes full credit for kind of his mentality helping that program get back on the map, yes. get back in the national relevance. Right. And uh, so it's like it's kind of it's kind of cool to see it, and it doesn't come off in like a, a cocky way, and at least in his talk to you. No, it's just a like confident. a confidence guy. Like this is what I'm here to do. I think I can do it really well. Yep. And uh, and then you go, well, you just got to work on your front shoulder. Yeah, you <laughs> got to work on your front shoulder because really the only throws you ever see him really rip, right? Yeah. Because you kind of said it. Everything's a go ball, a jump ball, a back shoulder throw, you know, some sort of wide receiver screen. But the only throws you ever see him rip are ones that I would go, they're safe for a quarterback. The curl route, right? Run 12 yards, butt hook in, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, you kind of know where he's going to go. You can. It's a f***ing curl route. You've been throwing that one since you're five years old. So he can. He rips that. You know, the slant route, he'll rip that every now and then. But I think with other routes that are a little more intricate at times, uh, when he does try to rip those a little bit and, and accuracy is a little bit more in play and – putting it in between guys and all that, you don't see as many there, and he can lose control of it. And I think that's, that's uh, you know, some of the negatives there. Well, I don't, he's not a first-round talent, just so mm-hmm. everybody knows. Okay. No way. I was going to see how many of these quarterbacks were first-round talents. Well, so. here's, here's quarterback number four, and he's not a first-round talent. Okay. Uh, you know, for me, again, Sam Howell, um, uh, to me, is a is a – Really an end of the second, really a, what I would probably look at as a third-round quarterback, wow. honestly. You know, again, that's, you know, I don't think it's crazy. There's nothing wrong with that. I was drafted in the third round, so f*** you. Don't judge on that. That's uh, bad. That's low. <laughs> that's very low. But I don't. I don't. I don't see first-round talent. Um, there's so, some things you got to fix, and I don't, I don't, you know, maybe sec, end of second round. Okay, I could see that. But but I, for me, probably I'm more of a third-round guy, honestly. All right, last thing from at yeah. Kissard3, what's the ceiling? With Sam Howard. So say that these questions you have about him, right. he's able to fix some of them, get his yeah. body more into it and to start doing it. Like he's a, he's a strong guy, maybe right. add something in the running game. Yeah. Like if everything kind of goes right or as right as it can for him, like how good can he be in the NFL? I think he can be a, like, if he could fix, let me get my shoulder to the target and not be so over the top. Now, again, these are big fixes. Yeah. Again, these are things where we go, we always, we talk about them every year in the draft. And I go, uh, and and here we are six years later. And remember that thing I said to you? It still hasn't really been fixed. Because if you thought he could fix them, he would not be a third-round talent. He would be a first-round talent. If I really thought or I saw enough evidence on film to go, you know, yeah, there's this one motion I don't like. But, damn, I saw 40 other throws of the right way, and I went, oh, he he can do it. It's there. Uh, Yeah, I I didn't really see that. But if If he could. If he could. If he can fix that. Again, that's a a big big if. Right. He He can be a starter in the NFL for a long time. I don't know if I'm not, you know, it's hard to tell what his arm would look like if he could fix some of those type of things mm-hmm. like you talked about. You know, I think it could be Baker Mayfield-ish, right? I think that's the guy I look at right. to go if he could do that. But Baker, he gets his front shoulder in. 
You know, he doesn't try to get over the top. With Baker, sometimes what we talk about is he tries to overthrow too hard. You go, your arm's plenty strong. Why are you trying to throw it harder? You know, so that's the guy, that's the guy I look at. Because the beard. The beard is very similar. He's but, already got a beard exactly like but, Baker. But, but it, this, yeah, when you have mechanical issues and then you also go, oh, man, you know, not as many NFL-type throws as you'd like and you don't see the consistency you'd like, that's when you go, oh, I mean, it's, it's a, it is a true projection. Mm-hmm. You know, I know like Josh Allen, people question things, but I went, wait, the motion's f***ing perfect. Like, you don't ever have to worry about it ever. And he puts the ball exactly where he wants to almost every throw. You know, now the problem was he thinks he can like, like oh, there's a keyhole. I'm going to fit it through there, and then it's going to make a right-hand turn, and I'm still going to get it in there to my guy even though he's quadruple covered. Yeah, if he's those off by five issues. inches, it's an interception. Yeah, that, because those are his issues, right. Yeah. Those are his issues. So yeah. there's a difference there and the and what needs to be done. And like I said, this is a, it's even though there's a lot of good, there are some parts there where I go, that those are some big fixes too. Okay. Uh, so we're into the top three now. Yep who probably still have some fixes, but maybe not as much as the two quarterbacks you just mentioned. Your number three quarterback in the draft class is? Malik Willis from oh, Liberty. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going Malik Willis. I mean, love Malik Willis's arm, first off, right off the bat. It's a special arm. There, there's no question. I mean, it's his, uh, he can make every throw on the football field with ease. Like one of those where, again, you turn on the film and you go, Oh, wait, damn, did he really throw that 20-yard out route that easy? Like, that would look really easy. Whoa, okay, whoa, that ball is flying through the air. You know, so I love that. You know, and as a thrower, too, you know, keeps his body in the right positions. You know, understands how to use the front shoulder. His motion is nice. I like his motion. I wish it was. It's a hair floppy, again, like we talked about, a little bit. You know, but not to where I saw, like, Justin Fields last year and all of that. No. Um, so that, that, that I really do like, I mean, his ability to throw deep balls, balls on the outside that are power throws, you know, they're effortless. Yes. Um, the running, the athlete Malik Willis, he is, how do I want to phrase this? He's a gifted runner. I don't think he's necessarily real fast. All right. Mm. I don't think he's faster than Pickett or corral straight away. I'm just going to say that flat out right now. Not to say that doesn't mean he's not a better runner. I because think it, there, there are some people that say maybe he could be draftable as a running back if he switched positions. He's, he, if, he, if he was that fast, he would have ran at the combine and said, I'm not worried about it. Mm-hmm. To me, and then when I watched the film, I went, oh, this is why he didn't run at the combine. He, did not, he didn't run at the combine because the, I don't think the time is going to be that special. Mm-hmm. But where he is good is he can accelerate pretty good, and he's got an incredible pair of legs and ass on him. And he understands how to set up blockers like a running back. That's where it's probably, to me, where it's from. He, he literally understands, like, if they run a quarterback design run, the guard pulls. He understands, like, oh, I'm going to get the defender to go here so I can cut here behind the blocker. Or I'm going to be real patient because this play hasn't quite developed yet. And then I'll kind of work my way through like a running back. There is true running back traits there, let alone because we talked about the strength in his legs. He breaks a ton of tackles, a ton of arm tackles, bounces off people, and he has very good quickness and ability to make people miss in the space. So that's where he's good. PFF had him as the most missed tackles for any player in college football last year, including running backs. uh, So there, there you go. Now, the question with all that, too, is, if I put Matt Corral and Kenny Pickett against some of that competition, their running would have looked better too. Yeah. And that's where I, I'm, you know, I'm, I guess I'm a little bit like, I'm not sure. How good is the running? I'm not sure. Because he wasn't running like that against Ole Miss. I could tell you that. He played Ole Miss. The running didn't look like that. He had some runs and some scrambles that you go, wow. But it wasn't like, oh, man, he's going to break the pocket or they're going to run quarterback design runs, you know, on Ole Miss all day and they're going to be in trouble. All right. So that's where. You know, gifted runner, how gifted, I'm not exactly sure, hmm. all right? That's where I'm not quite sure about the, the athlete of Malik Willis. Okay, so uh, yeah, a so couple wait, questions I got, yep, me, Don't worry, I got more to say, but you so keep we got three. Me. We got three homies that have got questions, because this is kind of a polarizing He seems to recruit. be the polarizing it guy It seems like I, I see some less, he's down there at six. I see some lists are like two, and some are like, hey, if the Lions have, you know, like what they see in his pro day workout, maybe he goes number two overall. So a uh, split opinion on him. Um, no way. No way would I take Malik Willis in the top ten of the NFL draft. I'm just going to say that right now. Okay. I'm not, you know, again, 
All of these guys, I don't know if they're really worthy top 10 picks in the NFL draft. I'm just going to say that right now. I know we even got to the top two. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's the ba- I, To me, they're really not. They're really not. Now, we know the quarterback position teams get desperate and all that. But I don't look at any of them as just go, oh, when it was Mahomes and Watson that year, I was going, I don't get it. Mahomes is the number one pick in the draft. I, 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 I don't get it. What's there not to like? Other than the record for the team at yeah. Texas Tech, and that we hadn't seen a quarterback come out of Texas Tech, so that was all it ever was. Mm-hmm. You know, this is what I look at, and I go, no, I don't know if anybody is is quite in that class. Braden Shackelford writes in, how does Malik Willis compare to Trey Lance as a prospect? He goes, obviously, both dynamic runners, albeit different styles, both have cannons, both coming from small schools. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, there are some similarities. There how are. about the football player? I think he's actually he's not as fast as Trey Lance. I don't think. I think he's actually a more naturally gifted runner, though, to what we're talking about, mm-hmm. right? Like, I don't think Malik Willis is going to be the guy where you go, oh, my, he dropped back and there was a gap right here, and it's going to be like Lamar Jackson or Kyler Murray or Josh Allen. They're going to take off for a 40-yard run. I don't think that's you're going to see that. I don't think that's really what he is. You know, I think he's going to be able to make people miss and dip and dive and then get out of the pocket and then, uh-oh, watch out. He's going to try to unleash the, the Kraken and throw a 40-yard laser across the field. I, that's where I see, okay, I like that. I also, like I said, in the running where quarterback design runs like Josh Allen, oh, it's third and two. We're at the two-yard line. It's third and goal from the two. They're going to be able to legit pull guards and do that and go, he, he, can, he can handle himself against a middle linebacker and do all that. So I think he's a naturally more gifted runner from Lance as far as you know, tucking the ball, making things happen. I don't think he's necessarily as fast okay. as Lance. Okay, Throwing the ball, arm strength. Lance has got a pretty strong Lance arm. has got a cannon. Lance can maybe throw the ball as uh, harder than Malik Willis. Okay. But I don't think he can control it the way Malik Willis said. Malik Willis's motion is shorter, and I have less questions about his mechanics than Trey Lance. Mm-hmm. You know, you were me with Trey Lance last year. There was things I didn't like about his motion that I, that I worried about in the NFL. And I think everybody kind of saw that once preseason started, where you went, yeah, it's, it is. The arm goes down to the knee sometimes, and it's way too long. And the ball doesn't spin. And it's like a knuckleball that he throws hard. Willis... His motion is tight, and even though it's a little bit elbowy, okay, it's not to the point where I go, oh, wow, that's a real problem. Right. So it's tight. He, when he does want to really you know, put some gas on it, he controls the ball pretty well, and he's got a quick release. To me, he's got the second quickest release out of all these quarterbacks. And Matt Corral at Ole Miss has the quickest. I'm going to give Willis the second quickest release. Hmm. But now we've said all that, and those are all the positives. Yeah. Here's the part of why he's three. Because to me, it's still, there's a lot of projection here. There's really no reading of plays and going through progressions. There's really none. You know, it's the whole year I can count on my hand where he gets to the third guy or goes one, two, three, right? So, hey, of course, and then we're going to get to another guy here in a second where I'm going to tell you he's, he's not the best at getting to two and three either. But the other part of it I don't like is you don't see that on film. And then there's too many plays. This is, to me, what scared me a little bit, and I think officially made him three for me. There was too many plays where I went, wait, that's the first read. He's wide open. Why are we not throwing to him? Why, well, why not? And to me, that, that was a little bit you know, raw and bothered me as well. So you don't get to see a ton of variety of throws. You don't get to see a reading of the field. And – I think it was a little bit of a, in my opinion, watching him of drop back, look at the rush, let me make a move, and then I'm going to make a throw to somebody who's now come open from me scrambling and make the throw that way. That's cool, but I don't know if that's realistic in the NFL on a down-to-down basis. Right. You answered this one. Robert Trees Stan says, if Malik Willis has a good pro day, is there any way the Lions don't take him at number two? Seems like a luxury they can afford. Um, You said you would not do that, but then you also described him favorably in comparison to Trey Lance, who obviously right. one team thought he was good enough last right. year for number three overall, so maybe there is a possibility. But uh, about the pro day, and we do have the pro days coming up, and so maybe you can revisit some of these after that. Yep. You know, Kenny Pickett is today, actually. Malik Willis is tomorrow. You got Matt Corral Wednesday. Ritter is Thursday. Did these pro days change it at all for you? 
what you see at these pro days or not really? I think they can add a little like icing on the top, really. Like they can f- confirm what you confirm think. Confirm what you think, or you know, like even like Zach Wilson last year, you go, oh wow, like it's just it's so easy for him. He can go out there and just say, I'm gonna show off and show you my ass today. Right. Right. That's when you go, oh shit, like it's real. Like he's cocky enough to go, eh, I'm gonna do a workout that nobody's done this year and yeah. kind of show you all. Yeah. That's where you go, oh okay. Yeah. You this like moon the scouts. Right. Like this is it. exactly right. Yeah, oh, you're like, oh, okay, this is, this is this is Steph Curry. He's hitting 40 yard <laughs> yeah. bombs. I mean, 40 foot bombs. Like it's nothing. If I was a scout, I wouldn't like that. I yeah. go, <laughs> put your rear away. <laughs> yeah. Put your rear away. Yeah. Yes. We so it's a, like it's a possibility, but yeah. Okay. Uh, but so, yeah, so it's a possibility. And I think, too, you know, for people who haven't seen him in person or anything like that, he's. Oh, maybe he can, you know, oh, okay, a coach has watched him on film and film, right? Now he sees him, oh, damn, his arm is stronger than I thought on film. Yeah. Oh, ooh, okay, oh, oh, damn, yeah. He puts the ball right where he wants to every time. Oh, the ball spins perfectly. Yeah. Sure, there's going to be people out there that the, the in-person look test is going to help him out. can be the opposite, too. You can be like, oh, wow, I thought he was maybe a little bit faster, or I thought he did throw a little bit harder. Uh, Cash Money Fork says, do you agree with the boom or bust narrative surrounding Malik Willis? Is, I, is he boom or bust? I don't know if I want to say boom or bust. I just think that there's a guy out of all these where I look at to just go, he might need, you know, a little more to develop. Not, 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 not. I mean, the guys we talked about already, no. Howell and Ritter, no. He's, he's, he's every bit as ready as they are. Yeah, there's some things about his game that maybe he wish he could go through reads like Howell, but he's, he's physically more gifted than those guys. But, no, just as far as, you know, hey, playing in the NFL, NFL consistency-type throws, you know, adjusting your eye to what's open. That was another thing I was – I'm sitting here in my notes. Yep. You know, there was too many times where he was looking at the guy, and I want to go – He's open. You got to throw that. And he's going, I think he's going, well, he's not open enough. I'd like him to be more open, to feel comfortable, right? And that to me sometimes speaks to maybe not great confidence in your, in your accuracy when you really got to pump it in there and make the right throw. You know, not, and, and he can because there's plenty of evidence of him going, whoa, you threw a laser 25 down the middle here and he was tightly covered. Yeah. But what I don't get is the next drive, you had three guys doing the same route and they were wide open and he didn't throw it. I don't know that. And that to me, I think, is what, you know, was a little concerning or what he just, there needs, there needs to be a little work done there. You know, again, and it's uh, the competition certainly going to be a little different too. Doesn't trust his arm, maybe sometimes when he when he should. You know, in, in yeah, your... just doesn't trust the accuracy of his arm. He sure. trusts his arm Strength. because he make yes, I mean he makes some hole shots where it's cover two and he looks in the flat and the corner jumps up to a guy in the flat and now he's got to fit the ball in the hole the receiver up the sideline before the safety gets there and he can do it with ease. Yeah, he really can. So that's where you really like uh, what he does for sure. He's kind of a soft spoken guy. In the interview with you, and I don't don't know how much, you know, it's like Howell, you, you can see, like, he l- sounds like an NFL quarterback. Yeah, like, yeah, you can right. hear him right. at the podium. You can hear him in the huddle. Like, I don't know how much, like, I don't know what Malik is like around the football team, but I always wonder about that. Like, a quarterback who's, like, more soft-spoken. And, it, like, is that, like, the teams look at that and go, ah, I'd like our, my quarterback a little more. There is teams that are going to like that. They're going to like that. But if they start to hear, too, that, okay, he's soft-spoken, but, man, the locker room loved him. Right. And he was able to lead them whenever he needed Sounds to. Sounds like he was able to do that. Right. Yeah. And, and then you go, okay, so what? He's just He just does it his own way. Right. But, well, uh, Deshaun Watson, you know, again, Forget the off the field stuff, everybody right. out there. I'm just yeah. talking about. I don't think he's like rah 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 rah. He was kind of that quieter type guy. Sure. But you just went, man. I'm confident because he's f-ing confident as hell, and he never seems to be flustered by anything. Right. So um, yeah, there's a lot to li- there's a lot to like there. There definitely is. There's a lot of little. There's a little work that needs to be cleaned up in his football game, and of course, coming from Liberty. Uh, yeah, the yeah. competition, the running, those are things I question a little bit. The seeing of the field, the accuracy in the tight windows, the fact that you don't get to see a lot of going through reads or anything like that. Right. You know, that's, that's where I would say it. And compared to Howell and the other guys we're going to hit on here in a second in, in Corral and Pickett, I, didn't, I thought he was not as good as working the pocket staying in there to go to the second and third read, maybe as much as the other two were either. Um, but throws a very catchable ball. 
You know, he is accurate, I think, all in all. When he sees a target and where he wants to, like I said, he just has to adjust his eye a little bit, throws spirals, and again, the arm is real. And he can do it like we talked about the quick release, right. and he doesn't need a ton of space. It's probably something I should have brought up with some of the other guys. And when I say that is like, if you've got a guy bearing down on him right in his face and there's a 20-yard out route that's open, he can kind of hang on his back foot and go, I don't need to step in this. I can just kind of flick it out there, and we can still make it happen. And, again, that's life in the NFL, especially if you're going to be you know, on a, probably a poorer team to start your NFL career. All right, some good, good tools there, good raw tools. You, yep, you'd like just, to have seen a little bit more diversity in the offense that he ran there. Not that he can't do it, but that he just didn't. He didn't get to see it, and so that's a question mark. So now we're down to the final two. Yeah. Are we down to? Are we into the first round territory? Quarterbacks. Well, here? I think so, and I think Pickett's Pickett. To, I mean, no, not Willis. Pickett. Willis is a into Willis the first is a round? yes. He's okay. to me is around there. I, I I look at it and just go. Uh, I, I think you could see at 20 Pittsburgh be interested and then somewhere in that range. Yeah. That's where I would kind of say it goes. You know, and again, who knows? You know, does these teams start to get a feel that some team might be hot on them? It is the quarterback position. We know that they can be overvalued in this. But, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I just want to make sure – yeah, I I think I hit it all. I, I think just, you did. I That's didn't leave anything well rounded critique of Malik Willis, all Thank the you. warts that he has, but all the good things that he can he can bring to a team too. So that brings us to number two. You've mentioned a couple names here in Corral and I'm trying Pickett. to throw it off, baby. I'm so trying to not know let exactly where you're going to go here. Maybe you'll go <clears> off the board <throat> and go Jack Cohen. You didn't even <laughs> talk about it. Yet. Seriously, number, number two. two, Kenny Pickett. Kenny P- Pickett from Pittsburgh. All right, really good football player, really good football player. The most ready right now of all the quarterbacks. The safest pick of the NFL quarterbacks in this draft, if you want to say that too. He's the safest. He is what he is, all right? That, that's what I'll say. Like, you know what you're getting with Kenny Pickett. You're getting the guy that can play the position truest to form out of this, dra- out of this, this group of, of uh, quarterbacks in this draft class. You know, the most NFL ready from understanding protections to reading the field to processing the information pre-snap, post-snap, going through the reads, definitely. You know, incredibly accurate thrower, especially in the intermediate range like we talked about. You know, five, ten-yard throws. He's on the money for the most part all the time. Good size, right? Plays pretty big too. I think he's what six three and change, two twenty two, two eighteen, two seventeen, maybe at the combine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but plays big. Awesome in the pocket, Amin. Awesome. I mean, really, like awesome. Awesome in not only he he's he's a good athlete. He's twitchy. He can make people miss. You know, there's good pop in his feet, so he can make people miss in the pocket that way. But also, just he has a great natural feel of where the pocket is and where to step into and be safe so he can still make the throws. And then when doing that, he's almost always in great position to throw the football. So that's where he's really good. Can run and go rip off a 10-yard gain, definitely. So there's all that aspects to like about it. The motion's pretty smooth. It's great. It's a hair over the top for me. It's a little bit over the top. I wish it was, you know, like we always talk about. I like to see people, their follow-through, you know, end up on the opposite pectoral more than the opposite pocket. Does that make sense? You got mm. that, right? Kind of stand whip up. across How your you body. Across? So if you watch Rodgers or Mahomes, when they're really trying to warm up in pregame or anything, the throw is here because they want to throw the ball with power that way. So if you bring the arm from here to here, you're not doing that. Your power can't go that way if it's going, you know, vertical, vertical, right? right. So that's where um, I'd like to see Pickett have a little bit, you know, more of a sense of coming around the ball that way. So those are all the things that he really does well, okay? But I'll say within all that, I don't say wow about anything with Kenny Pickett physically. Like I don't go – there's not one area where I go wow. At the same time, there's not one area where I go, oh, this is an issue and we really got to fix this, right? So I don't know if I necessarily see any trait that is real, real elite other than the fact that the guy can play quarterback. 
and that he's he is the most polished and ready to go of the group of this draft class. There's no question so about that. So not elite, but still above average. Definitely above average. Like Definitely arm strength, above, accuracy. Exactly right. NFL arm, without a doubt, can make all the throws. Throws a pretty deep ball for the most part. He really does. I wish he was a more aggressive decision maker. I'll tell you, that was a little bit of a negative to me. A lot of the big throws and big plays down the field were like, game plan called shots they not, not very few came within the rhythm of the offense and what i mean by that is like when people might go well, what does that mean i mean when they wanted to throw a big play it was like something they knew they were going to call all week for the big play and the coach finally was like got a feel and went hey when i call this play i want the big play where you know what i mean within the rhythm of the offense is hey this is a play that you know there's a comeback on the right. We got a shallow cross on the left. We got a 10 yard in cut behind it. And we got a post all the way out on the other side that's going to run it over the top of everybody. And, you know, certain coverages or go through your reads. Hey, every now and then you get to the post and do that. To me, there was none of that. Is that that makes sense at all? You yeah. know, he kind of knew when he was going to take those shots. So that would be the thing I would look at. But does throw the ball well on the run? And. You know, like I said, I think as far as quarterback play and putting it all together, right now he's the best, but there's just not, like I said, I think that one thing that makes me go, oh my gosh, that is f***ing awesome. I see a superstar right there. Kind of sounds like Mac Jones a little bit last year. There, there, is, similar. there is some of that. It's, it's, he does a lot of things really, really well. Right. It uh, does a lot of things really, really well. His feet actually are probably not as good as Mac Jones in the pocket. And then Mac Jones' ability to hit the bullseye and tight coverages and make the right decisions, like I said last year, was as good as I've ever seen. Yeah. But Pickett is right there with him. Pickett is a bigger man and a better athlete than Mac Jones, though, for sure. I mean, Pickett's going to be able to escape the pocket and make some throws. He's going to be able to, oh, here's a lane, and like I said, get 8, 10 yards and do that. Um, so those aspects he has more than Mac Jones. His arm is probably a little bit stronger, but – the accuracy, the spinning of the football, the anticipation, maybe not quite up to Mac Jones, what we saw last year, which was special for, for college it. football. Phil yeah. Trajanovic asked a question about Mac Jones, saying that he looked very similar to Pickett there, so that answers that question. But yep. D-Craw, or it's a D-Caw, D-Caw 90, the elephant in the room on Kenny Pickett, is Pickett's hand size being overblown? How does hand size really affect the quarterback's play? So he went to the combine. His hand size, what, eight and a half yeah. inches? It's the smallest in the NFL. Would be the smallest in the NFL. Right. Taysom Hill is at eight and three quarters inches. He wears gloves. He wears a glove on his throwing hand, which you're not a glove guy. No, you don't I'm like not. that? No. You don't like it? No. Take well, that glove off. You almost well, take that glove off? Well, I, I'd like to, he but refused. he has a real issue with his thumb. Like, there's something wrong with his throwing hand thumb where he can't quite extend it all the way. So that gives him a smaller hand size? So it, it does. He can't really spread it out all the way. Like, he showed me. It's kind of, like, stuck like this. Interesting. Yes. So the glove is needed for him to grip the football, I think, the way he wants. I don't like the glove. So, like, his finger. It's part, of the, it's part of the reason he comes over the top of the football. It's okay. hard to throw it sidearm with the glove and all that because the glove sticks to the fucking ball. So there's that aspect. But he says you just don't overgrip it. And he's been throwing with a glove since he said it's forever. Pop Warner day, I know. So it I might know. be part of his body. Like, it it's is. like I don't notice a difference between glove and hand. It it, it is. You know, we'll we'll see. You know, I do think there's sometimes I see some things mechanically where I go, you know, I think the glove affects that throw or yeah. you know, the ball didn't spin as good because you were able to like kind of keep your – even though your arm and your body were all in a position, you, you let your wrist get floppy because why? Because the gr ball was gripping the – the glove, glove was gripping the ball instead of you being like, no, here's the ball, right? Like Patrick Mahomes doesn't let his – like, man, this ball is slick. He doesn't let his like wrist and stuff slip all over. His wrist is locked in there. And then he does, oh, let me throw it here or there or there or there. But it's locked. There's times to like pick it, I could see – the looseness, and I think it affects his accuracy and the spinning of the football. Hmm. So that would bother me. He has out of those guys we talked out of the uh, out of Corral, Malik Willis. He is the third quickest release of that crew there. Like to get the ball out of his hands, quick game screens. He's not as quick as the, he can't just flick it like they can. Yeah. And the other thing is, he's there's compared to Malik Willis, and there's no there's no off platform throws. There's there's I didn't see any sidearm or you know different type of ways to get the ball to receivers. And you need to do that in the NFL? Uh, you do. Definitely in this day and age. Can you get away with it without doing it? Yeah, I can certainly point quarterbacks out, but I think the really good ones, oh, wait, I don't have a huge lane to throw to. Well, who the f 
cares? I'll just drop it down three quarters and throw a laser to their sidearm and they'll get through there. And that's what they do. And that's that's life in the NFL. Like we talked about, let alone some of the RPO game and the screens we talk about. That is when you need to be able to go, oh, wait, I just got to get it out real quick. Or I got to flick it. Or I fake the ball and, oh, there's a little lane between the linebacker and the defense. And let me get it out sidearm and do that. I don't see that. And that's where Malik Willis and Corral certainly had an advantage over him. But you rank him higher than Malik Willis because – and um, because – you think it's more likely that he is a serviceable NFL player? I just think right now, it's not. It, Malik Willis has more upside. Let me make that very clear. I think Malik Willis has more of an upside than Kenny Pickett. But again, some of the things we've seen with Malik Willis and what I would like to be fixed, they're, they're not as easy as just like we talk about it and just go, yeah. well, he needs to fix that. And there are things that I go, no, you know, they're tangible, it's real. You know, to where I'd, I'd like a little more growth there before I just put him there. I recognize there is more top end talent for sure, but I think the fact of the rawness and, like I said, the not going through reads, you know, maybe not seeing a lot of throws into tight windows, um, passing down the number one read where you go, wait, he's open. I don't know what he's looking at. There was just a little too much of that to me to go, okay, the potential now bumps up over the guy who's actually the better player, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Did I yeah. explain that correctly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's just a, I still have a few too many questions there. With Pickett, like I said, there, there's really no questions. Yeah. Is there room to grow? There is room to grow, but I don't think it's like going to be a ton. Yeah. I don't. You know, again, I, we talked a little bit about the mechanical stuff to where I think that could help him throw better spirals. Right. Could maybe make him throw the ball with a little bit power, better power. Um, um, but. But no, I think what you see is kind of what you're getting from him. I love his patience in the pocket, like we talked about. Very good decision maker. He kind of came out of nowhere, too. And I don't know, like, I mean, we're talking 2020. He had, what, 13 touchdowns, nine interceptions, I think Pete wrote here. And this past year, he's breaking records. Yeah. Breaking Dan Marino's and Deshaun well, Watson's that's conference it. record. Well, he's been there for six years. Played a ton of football. He is one of the older pros. Yeah. I mean, soon to be 24. So, and that's, so that's what he's got over the rest of the group. And that's where, again, if you're one of these teams, it's looking to go wait we kind of need a guy that's kind of ready this year mm -hmm. and there is no like bust factor there might not be quite the superstar factor we want but there's no then Kenny Pickett's your guy to me that that's where he fits in you know for for that kind of thing um yeah. I just want to make sure I didn't miss a lot of value here. in a guy that can come in and you know steady the the ship the boat if things are going down your starting quarterback is out for a couple of weeks a lot of value in guys like that, there especially if you can get them is. on rookie contracts. There, I, so. You know, I heard like Daniel Jeremiah, I believe, um, comp or man, I think it was. And, you know, I, I listened to DJ. DJ, I think he might have said like Matt Hasselback. And I, I, I understand what he sees there. Yeah. I don't think he's as gifted as arm as Matt Hasselback. Matt Hasselback, I think, is one of the more underrated quarterbacks in the history of football, in my opinion. Uh, but I understand what he's saying there. There's a twitchiness, a quickness, the ability to you know, diagnose and then put it into action very quickly. Like I said, even like you know, pre-snap, you could tell he knew, like, oh, wait, th this doesn't make sense against this coverage. I'm going to get to the number three read pretty quick here because I know one and two versus this coverage are not necessarily going to be wide open. All right, Kenny Pickett from New Jersey. Don't underestimate those New Jersey guys. We you learned it at the top that. of the podcast here, although he did root for the Eagles, and so maybe that's why you have him at number two. <laughs> that's Big why. time Eagles fan. <laughs> you know, the guy you have at number one is the one quarterback in your top five who did not talk to you at the combine. He blew that? you off. I walked by him a few times. Yeah. Uh, but I know. I never I observed him a lot, as I always do with these guys. But I know I was very it was my, my disappointment of the combine. It the shows that you don't hold a grudge. You don't, I don't hold, hold a grudge, grudge for blowing you off. And it, yeah, I don't even know Indy. what happened. I don't know. He might have been like F him. I don't want to talk about him. I don't know. <laughs> well, he won't be like that anymore yeah. now. Uh your number one quarterback in the twenty twenty two NFL draft quarterback class is Matt Corral. Yeah. Old miss. Oh, yeah, baby. Um, You're higher on him than most. I, I'm sure I am. You know, I mean, uh, you not know. everyone, but most. OK, yeah. I, you know, again, I don't I haven't really paid attention to where everybody's got everybody ranked yet. And, you know, you know me, there's only a few people I really pay attention to anyways. And not that I'm going to agree with them, but I like to listen to them and, and hear what they got to say about it always. But um, all right. So let's just get to the basics here. Here's the basics. OK, Um Insane athlete. He's the quickest quarterback in the draft. There's nobody with quicker feet, can make people miss. 
you know, great acceleration, uh, pop his feet to get back into throwing positions. Wait, I moved out of it. I made somebody miss. Oh, wait, I got to get it back into position to throw the ball 15 yards down the middle. Nobody can do that as quick as Matt Corral, let alone it's the quickest release in the draft, too. It's, it's, not a, it's, it's, a quick, it's as quick a release as I've seen in coming out of college football in a few years, really? actually. I mean, yes, it's almost to the point at times where I'd go, man, I'd let a, I wish he'd let his arm go a little bit more at times. Hmm. It almost looks like it's like – you have to slow it down sometimes. You're almost like, how did he get it out that quick with that much power? And it didn't look like – it literally looked like he just took it from his ear and was like threw it like a dart. I mean, it, that's how quick and compact the delivery is, all right? Then we get into the arm strength. I mean, the arm strength is phenomenal. It's, it's phenomenal. The ball absolutely flies out of Matt Corral's hands. To me, he's, he's made for the modern-day NFL. Oh, bootlegs on the move, Mo, you know, play action pass. You know, it's the deep post of the in cut and then make something happen and run. Oh, okay, this guy can run, you know. I think Matt Corral is faster than all the other quarterbacks. He's the fastest quarterback of this group. Like I told you earlier, I think he beats Malik Willis in a race. I think Kenny Pickett beats Malik Willis in a race. I don't think they can break tackles and make people miss like Malik Willis can, but I think they can beat them in a race. Uh, Corral, he's... The most accurate thrower in the draft, too. He is. I don't know what his numbers are. I don't even really f***ing care. I know when he sees a target, he can put the ball and the money into the tightest windows out of anybody in this draft. Now, Pickett gets to do more of it within the normal rhythm of traditional offensive plays. You know, the, uh, the offense in Ole Miss is a little different. And a lot of it is there's the RPO stuff, which he's mm -hmm. really gifted at. He can do sidearm. He can do both feet off the ground and still throw the ball with great power. He can get the ball out of his hands like Rodgers can on screens where you go, damn, I mean, he caught the ball, faked this to somebody, and kind of hopped out of the way and threw it all in the same motion and got it out there and did that. So all of that, to me, was top-notch. There's a lot of elite traits with Matt Corral, let alone he's bigger than what I thought and he's faster than what I thought. Now, the one thing is... He's got to put it all together. It's not all together there yet. I wish we did see a little bit more of let's go through reads. You know, there's some of that, but, you know, a little bit like like a, a, a Malik Willis or some of the other guys we've talked about, a lot of the times it's just look at one guy and, and I'm going to run or tuck it away. Yeah. And, yes, he's got to improve on that. But a lot of play action, 60% of the time. Because he's amazing at it. Highest in FBS. Sure. I could see that. You know, again, everything's built into play. I mean, every play is, you know, RPO, fake this, this, fake that, fake this, fake That's all they do there in Ole Miss. So, I mean, so it's just part of the offense. And he's a great – You don't have concerns that he couldn't handle a system that was less reliant on play action? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. Bo it doesn't bother me. It doesn't. You know, again, now, if I start to hear things where I go, oh, there people are starting to say he's an idiot and oh, he doesn't learn things like that. I go, oh, crap. OK, so maybe that's why they were doing that and that that. But I, I don't know that. Again, I'm going off of what I've seen on film. And he wouldn't talk to you. He refused and, to talk to you. Maybe talk. that's why. But I don't see like, like a guy who doesn't run the 40. He I don't wanna... <laughs> see. I don't see reckless decisions. Right. I'm yeah. not going to say he's perfect from that standpoint. He's not as good as Kenny Pickett. OK, but. He certainly knows how to take care of the football, let alone, like I said, there's some parts of his game that I think are, you know, our next level elite. I do. And I look at him and go, yeah, we got to fix some of the quarterback stuff. But when you talk about modern day NFL, RPOs, accuracy, get the ball out of your hands with, you know, quickness and pace. It, it's as good as anybody we've seen coming out in the draft the last few years. It's quick as hell. You know, bootlegs, anything like that, getting him on the run. He's the best thrower in the draft on the run, period. Nobody throws the ball better. Like I said, if he runs a bootleg and then presents himself, he's the kind of guy that can rip off a 30-yard run. He is that type of speed, you know. But – and then, and then you know, you talk about in the pocket, he's got great movement. I wish he was more patient in the pocket, like I said, because he's one of these guys – you know how we talk about sometimes, like, great runners yeah okay sometimes you know, they rely on that right yeah. and like well I, the whole life when the first guy wasn't open i just run you know he's a little gets stuck on the first read why his arm is so great he's always been able to get it into the first read for the most part so mm. he's always going wait you know this is the play we designed it for i usually get it in there i'll get it in there right. and then he will tuck it and run a little too quick at times definitely but some of the high-end talent is real and the negatives 
you know, to me, again, are just, yeah, going through the reads, okay, yes, right? I, I mean, th that's where I kind of get into it, and I don't go through a whole lot of other things that I think really bother me, other than maybe I wish he was a little thicker of a human being, but he measured out bigger than what I expected anyway. 6'2", 212, he turns 23 in January, so still quite young. Uh, yeah, uh, some scouts describe him as an athlete who happens to play quarterback. Uh, but that would be the question, the injuries, right? He played in that bowl game, which yeah. was cool. You yeah. know, in a, you know, not that I was talking about this with Pete before the podcast. You know, I don't hold that against guys who don't play in the bowl game because I get it, right? I, you don't need to yeah. prove to everything. Right. You don't want to get hurt. You're about to cash in on an NFL career. But I, I do have a lot of respect for players who say, no, nah, I want to play. I want to play with my teammates. And that's what he did, although he did get hurt early on in that game with an ankle injury. It kept him out of some drills at yeah. the combine right. now. I mean, so that, you know, we've seen that before with – Injuries. Some of them are freak injuries, but he has had a few, and you wonder if you get tabbed with injury prone. That yeah, label, sure. It's you know, hey, we always look at this type of stuff, with especially quarterback position. He does have a slight frame, but it was one of the things I think when I saw him in person. Uh, I you did your evaluating of legs and legs I, and I, he was, uh, it was the first thing I jumped off. I went, oh, he's not going to measure at six foot. Yeah. I mean, everything I looked at look, going out of the combat, everyone was like, oh, he's going to be six foot. He's going to be six foot and a half or something like that. And I went, six well, two. no, I just met Malik Willis. He's bigger than Malik Willis. He was taller. I know he wasn't quite as thick. Uh, so you know th that that made me feel better. Let alone, I felt like you know on on film. He plays bigger than what I thought anyways, too. You know, his he stands tall in the pocket. He looks like he has pretty long arms. You know, I didn't come away looking going, oh, man, he looks small out there. You know, I did think that a little bit with Baker Mayfield coming out in the draft. If you go back and listen to stuff I said then. Mm -hmm. So that made me feel better about him as well. Jacob Shapiro says Matt Carell kind of has that Philip Rivers release. My baseball coach has always said to get your arm back, and they don't. Isn't that a problem? It is. It, it, definitely would like him to me he's got a little of like it's like he's got to yeah let it relax let it go a little bit it's almost like Aaron Rodgers coming out in college where you go whoa holy cow how does he throw the ball that hard with the ball at his ear the whole time I don't yeah. understand how he does that and so it is it's something I look at to go it'll make him a better thrower if you know, it wasn't so quick and tight, but his arm is extremely flexible. Like when I go into super slow motion, some of these throws, I mean, his arm is flexing. That's how he can make it look like, or throw the ball that hard with such a short, tight, compact motion. But to our question here, and it's a very good observation by them, yep. because there is one thing that Matt Corral does a little bit like Phillip Rivers, that is, this is his biggest mechanical issue. And this is the only time he really misses throws. He leans on his front foot too much. Mm -hmm. Now, because his arm's so strong and it's so quickly flexible, he can get away with it a lot. But what I mean by that as I stand up here is, you know, again, like we've talked about, when you want to be a thrower, you want to be almost here more, right? Lean on that back leg. Maybe the, 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 the shoulders are level to slightly tilted up rather than he at times can be like this. Lean forward. And it can lend him to, okay, there's a tight end throwing it, running a 10-yard out. You know, he's gifted and has such a strong arm that he can get away with it at times where he can still just throw a laser, like, belly button high and it get there. But if he's just a little off, it'll lead to him throwing the ball at the guy's knees or at the ankles. And that's where he's got to fix off. So he's yeah. got to get a little out of this from being here to get back to here. And he'll be able to throw – lasers anywhere now he does it and again that's one of the things I'd like him to fix but why he's number one is I see plenty of throws where he is in the right position and two like we talked about life in the modern day NFL yeah moving in the pocket throwing balls off platform not a lot of room to throw this football he needs no room to throw the ball it's it's like a fucking optical illusion at times Ahmed with him like where you go did that ball really like a little like we talked about Malik Willis where you go did that ball really go 25 yards? It didn't look like it went more than four feet off the ground yeah. to get there. And he had a guy in his face. And that's where you just go, whoa, like, holy shit. Let alone it's a perfect f***ing spiral and it's spinning hard. So, yeah, that's what I wrote. And, you know, my end note was like, hey, the kid is not perfect, but he, he's got more ability than I was expecting. Better runner than I thought. The arm is more explosive than I thought. We got to fix that forward, forward, you know, lean a little bit. But the arm is elite. The quickness in his release is elite. The quickness in his feet 
and how he moves there is also elite. He has to go through reads be better, but he doesn't need space in the pocket to make great throws. There is a ton of upside in this kid hmm. and way more upside than Pickett, I wrote. It's so, just not as good as playing the position as Pickett quite yet. Well, so that, I was just going to say, yeah, it sounds like in, yeah. a, in a quarterback class who a lot of people are debating where are these guys and they're kind of interchangeable, you might have a guy one, I have him three, that's not that big a deal. It kind of sounds like you have a fairly significant gap between him and everyone else. To here. me, I think he's the guy for sure, a definite. You know, like I said, Pickett's the safe one. There's there's a hair of a projection here. Yeah. But to me, it's a projection where I go, ah, even though the things we're concerned about, if you want to come home with me and watch the film, I'm going to show you 20, 30 plays to go, see, he can do this the right way. Here's plenty of evidence. It's not just like we saw it once. I can go through it and go, no, I, I saw plenty of times to go, I feel good about it. You know, let alone for a strong arm guy, he's not too reckless. You go back to last year when he had a little more talent around him. Man, are there a lot of high-level freaking throws, too, that make you even feel a little bit better about what you saw this year. But, yes, the next phase for him is like we talked about. It's kind of just putting it all together as far as, yeah, clean up that little mechanical issue, learn to go to one to two to three. He's too much Ahmed where he goes, oh, 20-yard out route. And you go, oh, come on, here comes the crosser 20 yards down the field. Throw it to him now. The out route wasn't open 20 yards to your left. Here comes the crosser. Go to it. No, there's too many times where he goes 20-yard out route. Oh, let me just find the check down, and I throw the check down. Where you go, no, you had time in the pocket. Stand right. in there. You got a great arm. Just do it. That's what you got to do. But to me, that's not like an overly concerning thing. I don't go, oh, man, that really bothers me. Uh, he'll learn that. And like I said, you have I have enough plays to go, okay, I see him go through the reads here. You know, I, I do see that. And then I think when you couple that with what I see in the the some of the elite physical traits there, that's why I make him the number one quarterback. And to me, yes, he clearly has the biggest upside. And it's not like it's a project here. It's raw. Mm -hmm. You could play with Matt Corral next year in the NFL, play actions, boots, and screens, and he's going to be able to do things and make some throws where you go, well, f we can build on this and, and, and grow this guy into something. How high would you take him? I mean, Corral, in my opinion, is the only guy that has the talent of talking top 10-ish kind of guy there. You know, so to me, that's, that's, he's, he is there in that. You know, again, where, where we get into this conversation is if Tua can go five, then Murat Corral certainly can too, in my opinion. All right. But as I think we all know, Tua was a little overvalued, mm -hmm. you know, and we'll see. But I, I would think, I, which which is interesting. So you think? I mean, like I look at Corral and go, man, the New Orleans Saints at eighteen. If they're looking for the quarterback of the future, man, he fits that. He'll fit that system. West Coast, boom, incredibly accurate. Like I talked about, quick release, Drew Brees type stuff. Except he's got you know, more power in his arm to really mm. make like some big time plays and throws. And, you know, I, I, I look at that. You know, I mean, it seems like the Eagles are going to stay with Jalen Hurts there. So 15 and 16, I don't look at that. The Texans, I don't expect them to go quarterback. It seems like they're going to stay pat with Davis Mills. But I don't know. Maybe they'll look at it and go, you know, this kid's so talented. I will do that. Well, that's the, that's the thing. I mean, we're talking about this being a down draft yeah. class. And yeah. It is. But – it could present some good opportunities for teams, right? Where you can get a quarterback who maybe can grow into a legit starter and you don't have to spend a first or second, a Mitch Trubisky at number two to I get know. it. You know, I, you can I kinda, think this is one of those years. This is interesting. I do. It is. It's, you know, it, it's a year where I know I've told people I could go, I could see Detroit who has the 32nd and 33rd pick of the draft going here, some team take this. And now we're back up in the teens and we're taking our quarterback of the future there. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of ways this can go here. Certainly uh, there's no perfect prospect. No doubt about that. I get that. But to me, this is the guy. This is the guy that is the number one quarterback in the draft class. He's the guy that has the highest upside, the, the chance to be the superstar. And, yes, it's not perfect, but it's not so raw to where I go, oh, there's a lot of things. You know, there's, 
there's three or four things I'm worried about. Oh man, he did the first reads open a lot. He misses that. You know, there, it's not that. Right. So, you know, again, the things I think he needs to fix are things that I think are fixable and we'll see where it goes from there. But I think NFL teams, you know, for the most part, the coaches and that they're just getting into these quarterback things. And I think we'll start to get a feel for how they feel about it here over the next few weeks as things start to get leaked and rumored and all that. They should just listen to the podcast. Yeah, that's, they what they, that's how they start. That's what they start their do. preparation. So yeah. here it is. Etch it in stone. The top five quarterbacks, according to Chris Sims, in this draft class. You reserve the right to shift them a little bit, which you've done in the past. A little bit. You've Last year I made, you know, made, I switched one fields spot, and lands. Maybe. Yeah, like I'm spot. never going to make huge tweaks. You're not going to see me as like one of the guys on, you know, some places where all of a sudden the number two guy is the number six guy, the number right. six guy is the number one guy. And like, that's not going to happen. Real quick. Yeah. Carson Strong, Nevada, a guy who had a good year. Right. Um, injury issues with his knee. Yeah, should have stayed in school. I don't understand it. Mm. It's hard to really tell what he is. I mean, he's he's on one leg. He's big, you know. He's an aggressive thrower, but the lack of athleticism for this day and age in the NFL is a real thing, let alone I don't even know how athletic he really is because he's playing on one leg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he got to throw it a lot. The throwing wasn't as good as I would have liked. I, I will say that. For a guy who can't move. Yeah, that's uh, to me, it's not good enough there. So, yeah, I don't look at uh, uh, you know that as being like one of those. I was thinking like maybe he'll be the guy that'll kind of be that mid-round, got a chance to maybe be something in the future. I, I, I would say as I look at it right now, no, I got a lot of questions about that. And Western Kentucky's Bailey Zapp, nearly 6,000 yards, 62 touchdowns. He's a guy that I look at and go, eh, there might be something there poor man's case Keenum let's say that that's what he kind of reminds me of yes got to play to play a lot understands you know defenses going through reads he's a better athlete than I think his 40 times showed at the combine his arm is good not great but he controls the ball to me a career backup type of guy right mm. but I, I don't think he's as talented as case Keenum is coming out you know from Houston you know a ways back all right, the million-dollar question. Yeah, I got one other guy, though, to me that d deserves to be talked about before those two. Oh. I do. You would have brought up another name. I, uh, to me, number six is Jack Cohn from Notre Dame. Oh. I'm going to say that right now. I'm going to – Jack Cohn's film was much better than I realized. Jack Cohn's game will translate better to the NFL than to college. Interesting. That's the one thing I will say. So if there's a sleeper outside your top five, that's it. He's like – Jack Cohn, I look at Jack Cohn and go, there's poor man's Davis Mills, right? Like – He's un you weren't you weren't really high on well, Davis yeah, Mills. Because, so well, I got I got it because well, I wasn't it wasn't you that said I wasn't Davis high. Mills was a poor man's Mac Jones. So well, now we're talking poor man's poor man's. Well, Mac Davis Jones. Mills I only fought about because people were trying to say he was a first round pick, yeah. and that's where I was like, no, he was not. But Jack Cohn, I think the one thing that I looked at more than anything. I mean, damn, he very rarely makes the wrong decision. Damn, if anybody's ever open, he hits it. He puts the ball on the money almost every time where he wants. He's not a great athlete. I understand that. But he does know how to play in the pocket and play NFL quarterback football. And he's fast enough to – he runs for a touchdown, scrambles and throws the ball in the run. He's not like he's a total statue. Right. So he'd be the guy that I looked at that I thought was – I would make him number six. I'm just going to let you know that right now. I would. You know, and again, uh, my I, my family's worked with Jack Cohn. I want to make sure everybody knows that right now. So Full you, disclosure. Yeah, they, since high school. Since high school. But I don't give a shit. My my family's also worked with other quarterbacks we've talked about in the draft the yeah. last few years, and I didn't give them that much hype. Yeah, you'd love right? the chance to rip on your family for not making them into a better so, quarterback. So, yes, yeah. I, I, I'm going strictly from the film, from what I see, and, yeah, I think he's better than what the public realizes – Again, college football is not the greatest athlete. He's not going to make highlight plays or 40-yard runs, but he is a quarterback that would be able to take advantage of all that an NFL offense can offer you with an offensive coordinator, and he'll understand how to do that. Got it. So that's where I look at Jack Cohn and go, no, he's no doubt a career backup for sure, and that's where I like, like him. Very quickly as we go, sorry, Kristen, this has gone uh, gone long, but we had a lot to talk about we with a, a lot of these quarterbacks. Uh, points bet over there has the odds for a uh, the first quarterback drafted, and the odds on favorite right now is Malik Willis. So you, well, he, so this is the question. Wow, look at Matt Corral. Yeah, you're number one plus fifteen hundred. So the the question that's uh, that's two different questions, right? Who do you like the best, and who do you think will go first in the NFL draft? So you would, if you were a GM, you would take Matt Corral. 
Yeah, and I think that's where it'll go. You think that he'll end up rising to the top? I do. Yeah, this is just the public and a bunch of people. So you get know. your bets in right now. Right. Uh, to me, I, I, I do. I, I think, you know, again, the, the talent to me is just too great, and it speaks to itself. And again, there's not a lot of, like I said, rawness. So you're not to where you're going to go, oh, wow, th- this worries me and this worries me, and I don't know how it's going to translate. Uh, we, we hit the concerns, I think, for the most part. Again, you know, I don't know the person. I'm not sure what he does in the board. But he certainly didn't look like or play like a guy where I go, oh, you can't trust him. Or, oh, he's an idiot. Or, man, you never know what's going to happen. Not at all. And then I think I think when you couple that with the what I talked about, some of the elite traits there, I just go, uh, it would be hard for me to think that the NFL is not going to see this and realize this as well. All right, so that's a way to make money yeah, right now. There you go. And Chris, Get on points, man. You've got another way for the homies out there to make money as well. I do, and I forgot about it, but here you go because I can do this. Here we go. It, if you're in an eligible state, if you're in an eligible state, all right, yeah. PointsBet has an exclusive sign-up offer for unbuttoned listeners that you can't miss, all right? Download the PointsBet app, use code NBC2K to sign up and get two risk-free bets up to $2,000. What a bu- freaking deal jeez. that is. I mean, geez. Amazing. Amazing, all right? Risk-free. So if you bet 100 and lose, you will get free bets worth $100 once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your bet life with points wow, bet. Wow, that's pretty good. That was a rough start, but you totally made up for I it. I did. It was end. kind of not the greatest end either, though. I could have been better at the end. <laughs> I was only rough at the start only because I forgot that this was coming and I didn't go there on the page You didn't yet. mentally prepare yourself I didn't, for I did it. not get there all these. Yes, I did not. All right. So, so what good, do you Pete. think? How do you, so what do you think? What's What do you and Pete think of the reaction will be from my rankings? I, I, I've looked at so many yeah. evaluations of, of people who have just kind of looked at him and, you know, semi-experts. And there's just such a diversity of opinion that it seems like it's hard to, like, if you go, yeah, my guy's no, my number one guy is Sam Howell. I'll be like, yeah, he did have a really good year two years ago. And, like, I don't know. I, I it's It's hard for me. And you know me. I'm not I'm not a film scout guy, so I always defer to your opinion. We'll wait till Pauly B comes in here and crushes <laughs> you for Matt Corral and goes, I don't see yeah. it. Um, but no, no, I think it's gonna be uh it's gonna be fascinating to watch exactly who takes him, who quote unquote reaches for a quarterback, because that yeah. probably will happen, and which quarterback that is, who yeah. falls in love with which quarterback. Yeah, no question. I, I, you know, and hopefully we'll start to hear those type of rumors. But again, it's 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 a limited amount of teams too that even need quarterbacks this year. That's where it's interesting mm-hmm. too. You know, you got the Carolina Panthers at six. I don't see them doing that at six to take a quarterback there. I don't see it. I don't know. Maybe maybe that'll happen here as they evaluate and go, okay, we need a guy. Uh, I don't know. But you got the Falcons at six. We know the Seahawks are sitting there at nine. You know, they're you know, obviously got a need at quarterback. The Commanders filled their need. The Houston Texans seem set on Davis Mills. The Eagles, uh, they seem set on Jalen Hurts. So there's nothing there. We know the Chargers aren't doing The Saints at 18. Okay, you got them. Pittsburgh at 20. We know that. Then you go back into the 20s there, and you start to look, and you go, okay, the Tennessee Titans may be quarterback of the future. I don't know. Dallas, Buffalo, they're not doing anything. Arizona's not doing anything. Green Bay's not doing anything. You know, the Miami Dolphins, I think they're going to make it work with Tua. And then you got the Lions at 32. Mm-hmm. So you look at it, and you go from from – other years, it seems like there's less quarterback needy teams too. Yeah. If the Giants fell in love with someone, you could see them using one of those top picks, maybe. Yeah. No, I don't. I think they're going to make try to go with Daniel Jones too. I think they're going to give it its its due time, right? And you know, I don't know if they fell in love again. Again, you know, it's I don't know if this is a year where for any of these guys, you just necessarily go, oh, I'm going to replace this guy that we kind of like and go with these guys here. Yeah. You know, again, uh, Corral is the only guy I look at to go, okay, you could strike gold here. Pickett's the guy you look at to go, I don't think anything really wrong can happen, but you might not strike gold, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it might not be the highest floor, but it's not a very low ceiling either. You know what he is, like I talked about. So it'll well, be interesting conversations as we go. We'll see, because this week we're going to have those pro days, and you know what happens after those pro days. Oh, Whoa, yeah. scouts were blown away. It was amazing. Right. He went 50 for 51. It was a guy. <laughs> I can never see anything like it. Yeah. So yeah number one I know. overall. I know. Well, there's got to be some context into that, too. And that was yeah. real cool oh. about Zach Wilson. 
Wilson's workout last year. Yes. He didn't pad the stats with easy, easy throws. Was, oh, and we've already got one. So Kristen, this will be the last thing. Breaking news. Kenny Pickett showing off the arm strength with this throw went about 60 yards in the air. It's already happening. Oh, it's maybe. already happening. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I can't wait to go watch it, though. Either way. I mean, Kenny Pickett, first-round quarterback, no doubt, out of pit. We'll see where it goes. Oh, hold on. Hold on. We, we do have – oh, we do actually have breaking news. Oh, Matt Casey has been texting. Deez, pay attention to your boss. Hold on. Hold yeah. on. Wow, this is like – Do you suspense. know how to get into your phone? Oh, we got it. Oh, my gosh. Okay. All right. Kristen, we're not – we're not quite done. Pete says, stop screaming at us, Matt. We, we've got this under control. It's been a long pod. Breaking news, Matt Ryan is going to the Colts. Wow. wow. Maybe. Maybe. Not completed yet, but trying to finalize. That would be big time. I mean, big time. I, uh, I don't even know what to say. Chain, game changer. Another good quarterback in the AFC, by the way. Holy crap, Ola. But, yes, the Colts are... The Colts are so close. You know, they're they're going to be willing to be aggressive to make these moves. Ballard's got the team and the roster right in the spot you want it. They just made a trade to get another difference maker on defense. You know that was one of my issues with them all year last year. Uh-huh. One more difference maker on offense and defense. They were missing one Jimmy or Joe that I felt like the other teams that were elite in the NFL had, and they didn't. And I still think that, like I said, I think they're still one guy away, despite the quarterback. They need another receiver or somebody like that that can be, you know, their dynamic playmaker that way. Uh, and and man, you get Matt Ryan. He fits that offense, man. That that'll be a big time. I, I just I can't get over the AFC. It, it's it's on. I've never seen anything like it. Jay Glazer, the first to report that uh, trying to work out that deal. If you're listening to this right now, maybe done by the time you hear it. And then who knows? Maybe the Atlanta Falcons now are back in for a quarterback at their what number six overall? You said uh, they are. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think they are. They're no. They're, that was the Falcons. The Falcons are eight overall. Falcons are eight. Yeah. So that could be. That could be. And. Who's their coach there? Arthur Smith. What what does he like to do off the pass a lot? Play action. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, Matt Hello, Corral. Matt Corral. Get your bet in on points bet right now. <laughs> Throwing plus lasers down the middle to Kyle Pitts for 40-yard touchdowns off play action pass. I can see it now. All right. Well, you got something to talk about with uh, Florio tomorrow yes, on I PFT. Do. Yep. All right. Cool. Changes I can't wait to text some people and, and for a get couple some thoughts here. And for Baker Mayfield. Now, where, where is he going to go? Oh, I guess that's off. Holy crap. I know. Okay. He's got so many moving parts here. It's amazing. Who knows? Maybe he's my Lions quarterback next year. I don't know. Well, that's what Florio's talking about. Yeah. He thinks that's the fit. And then Jared Goff traded to. I don't think you're going to have to give a whole lot up to get Baker, Probably like we not. talked about. So. All right. It'll be interesting. All right. We're done. That was a two hour podcast. We're out of here. <laughs> we did it. You know where to find us. Send your questions. I understand some people aren't going to be happy. This is not personal to anybody. This is just my job. I got to rank these guys. I call it like I see it. I know it's not always popular. It's not personal. Please. All right. Please. Let's have a good, healthy discussion about it. Everybody be good out there. Hope you enjoyed the pod. Ahmed, way to go today. All right. Clap it Clap up. Clap it up. Stop drinking that gross drink. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.